Okay. Welcome to hey. Starfinder, the Fragments of Eternity. Finally, the return of us. Uh, I'm Ryan, hey. the GM. It is session 23, uh, the 10th of June 2019. Still going strong and other such phrases. Like, subscribe, hello Nick. Here are my players. Hi Nick. Oh, we've missed you. Hi, I'm Nico. I'm playing Zora, the vice captain. I am Alex. I play Nix5, the android spanner boy. I am the copyright infringement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, I had to, I had to go big. I had to go home. Hello, I'm go Gordon. Home. I play like a quid space cop extraordinaire. Hi, I'm Callum, and I am playing Zig, the mystical space rat boy from your favorite place, the sun. <laughs> the sun. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. So we're right. So good. <laughs> so strong. We love that move. Oh, it's good to be back. <laughs> it's nice to be back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, just a wee bit of a, a gap. Not actually as long as you'd think. Just a month, but enough for the madness as it ends. Since we're so far, we're doing one a month. It's not bad. Um, we're changing how we're leveling as well, in a way, um, and just how we're driving the game forward for everybody who cares at home and everybody who doesn't. Uh, we're going to do party goals, and that's what we're going to discuss now. Welcome to this segment called Party Goals. Ryan, when you're trying to find the audio again for when you were like, what was the party goal? It's here. Um, right, guys. What would you like your goal to be? Or should we talk about what just happened? Maybe we should reflect. What happened? Who remembers what happened? Recap wouldn't go on this. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, Jay's first, <laughs> went to a, they went to a space station where there were these little orb... <laughs> Plasmoids! Plasmoids, <laughs> thank you. Um, and uh, yeah, that was really weird. Oh, no. was weird Let's go further back. Like Let's go further back, okay? So Zig, at the earliest point in time, <laughs> oh god, that, no. that, that, no. he's, that he's still to find out about. <laughs> no, they were delivering a crate <laughs> on behalf of the Aspis Consortium to the Baskerville Research Station. Fast forward till now, and you have oh. the Dry Queen in a flask. I forgot about that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> One bottle of drunk bean, please. Mm. Yep. Premium yeah, blend. Mm. <laughs> Gross. Uh, yeah, so who... Source. Right, Nico, recap us. What happened? Uh, well, last time? No, last just, session? Just whatever. Uh, pff, what's happened? Right, well, where do I start, lads? Let's think. We got kidnapped by dragons. Ah, uh, oh, <laughs> <That was> actually. <laughs> um, I'd listen to them. We met. We met the leader of the Aspis Consortium. Mm -hmm. We've met Bowen Sages. <laughs> it's like we've got the Drow Queen in a jar. <laughs> <laughs> we've fought hell demons and fiends. <laughs> Icky goblins. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I fucking passed that check all right, the fiends. <laughs> <laughs> you bullshitting the fucking CEO well doesn't change what they were. <laughs> <laughs> and they were being kidnapped by dragons again. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, what about you, Alex? Can you recap any? <laughs> um... Yeah, there was a weird spooky thing in the force field. Mm, that's right. You just let it out as well. You we did, and then it turned out to be Edgar. Mm. So he's a spooky boy. Yeah. So we should probably kill him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that leap of logic there. Spooky equals... We should find out <laughs> why he was a weird thing. And then kill mm. him. And then proceed to kill him, yes. <clears throat> this is speaking as a player and not as character. Or a mother. Well, um, <laughs> as, as both, quite frankly, I'm speaking <laughs> as. <laughs> as a player and a mother. <laughs> <laughs> Next five is some sort of begrudging pacifist, despite the artillery cannon. 
Um, yeah, that's just to force pacifism upon those who don't see the glory of it. Speaking as a gun. <laughs> we shall have peace by war. Luckily guns don't kill people, rappers do. <laughs> that's a very best way of thinking, actually. You're, you're learning well. Like, peace through war. It's a tactics, right? To secure peace is to prepare for war. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I have prepared a lot. <laughs> and also Metallica. Metallica quoted. That, um, that's where I first heard it. Probably. What were you calling? Can you give us a recap? Uh, year gap. Look for a rat boy. He go to a drow place. Uh, fight drow. Well, drow also sort of massacred themselves to make a big gloop. Uh, the gloop popped. Uh, Edgar. Mouthy beast, Boglins in can, uh, scoop up Queen, get back in spaceboat. Yeah, pretty decent. Yeah, I thought it was alright. I mean, I said it as stupidly as I could, <laughs> but I thought it was pretty alright. Were you, uh, Cal? Uh, went to went to a library. Mm -hmm. Hour gap. Find everyone on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Not everyone. Yeah. Well, not everyone. Find the captain on fire. Everybody was on fire. Well, I was stood next to Zora, and it was a lot of fire and a lot of Zora. <laughs> I, saw, I saw fire and a lot. Of, there's a lot of Zora. Um, nearly died. Uh, Queen died. Some spooky space boy just, you know, zaps the pants off people. The weird, horrible. Zappy Just think of the weird space thing. perv. You there, you have no pants! You there, no pants for you either! <laughs> Imagine that was the villain. Um, <laughs> reunited with Edgar after only an hour of seeing him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bizarrely. Bizarre, yeah. yeah. What a crazy coincidence. To be fair, like that time you spent in the weird fleshy vault, which sounds like the worst phrase. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, you, you've bonded, right? We've definitely bonded. I think I think we've got like dabbled in a bonding. Dick's opinion, that, yeah, it's just bond. A bonding dabble. <laughs> Some dabble in the bonding. I was gonna say bondage there. And like, oh, Some dabbling know. or dabluge <laughs> in the bondage. <laughs> bondage doesn't have to mean naughty. Bondage. Yes. Doesn't, doesn't have, have to. Have to. Mm. But it will. <laughs> yes, it will. Um, Cue the fan art oh, yeah. of Zig and Edgar, but yeah, okay. Yeah. Thing is, we already know you can fire rainbows, so we're halfway there. I mean, yeah. <laughs> is it? 11 and a prayer. Mm. Whoa, -ho. Whoa. And indeed, way hey. So, right, what would you like to, besides that nonsense piece of uh, eight minutes, what would you like the particle to be? <laughs> That's based on that. <laughs> well, we seem to have um, a very immediate problem in the form of a... Excuse me. Uh, uh, a dragon. Or a dragon man. Um, <laughs> on our spaceboat. Dragon man. Yes. yes. Mm. Uh, so the, I think the first objective should be uh, resolving the mystery of the Tub o Drow Queen. Um, you know, what are we doing with this? Are we handing it over to him? You know, th th that's, that's the sort of most pressing one. And beyond that, if we don't sort of give it over to him, what are we, what are we saying to SK? You know, whether we do or don't, we kind of have to explain to her the, uh, the uh, absence of a, a live Drow Queen. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I think, what do you do about the Drow Queen, now that she's... Mm. Cause put... I watch my thinking as well, that and Edgar. The, what do we do with Edgar? Yeah. We're talking about the SK, do we get him in a force field instantly because he's a crazy fucking shadow rainbow demon? But he always was, presumably, right? I mean, he always was, I'm not sure in that yet, but... Mm. We were I mean, sort of all right around him before. We didn't really know that he was a crazy, spooky, sickening, inducing uh, creature. We did. He was a capitalist. 
<laughs> Not only that, though, a fucking arm stealer. <laughs> 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 you know, I think they've Guns don't kill people. Yeah, rappers do. <laughs> and nobody had checked his music collection. <laughs> Space he drank his drinks and took his money. <laughs> yep. You sound like such horrible fucking wheelers and dealers that way, doesn't it? We just drank his <laughs> expensive booze and, uh, yeah. Fantastic. I'm a joker, I'm a talker, etc, etc. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that in a while. I'm um, disgusted at us. I am also disgusted at us, but I don't know if it's bad disgusted or good disgusted. So we'll find There's out. There's a difference. Yeah. Disgust. How satisfied you feel at the end. <laughs> <laughs> we're, still, we're still waiting. So anyway. <laughs> uh, right, okay, so let's try and word this in something then. Right, so let's if we go to the game manager sheet. Right, we'll, right make, we'll make ourselves a new, a new tab. So let's have a new tab. Sheet 14 is in fact called. Um, and we'll call it the particles. Der Welt <laughs> ist right. Uh, and then, why don't you pick what your goal is going to be and try and make a, a sentence if possible? Party. <laughs> it's just an ongoing goal, that one, though. No. My goal <laughs> is the party here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I hear that we like to party. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> no one uses verb. Verb is a part. <laughs> Fuck me. Don't you dare use the word party as a verb in my shop. <laughs> there you go. You, you understood. Yeah, that was I got the reference. I got you. <laughs> verb as a party. <laughs> Don't like, use um, verb as a party in the shop. I feel like <laughs> Evan in um, Bruce Almighty. Mm, yeah. The prime rib roast. <laughs> <laughs> Good scene. Definitely yeah, good scene. Yeah, yeah, very, very amusing. <laughs> also, a uh, good soundtrack, uh, by which I mean there was an Avril Lavigne song on it. Of course. <laughs> Pretty sure it was a decent film. It's <laughs> 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 an opinion. Um, yeah, like, okay, so these these are good goals. Um, so far, for those at home, we've got uh, We Kill the Batman and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 <laughs> Secret of the Ooze. <laughs> Although that just makes me think straight to the Power Rangers movie with Ivan Ooze, but yeah, yeah. that's that is the only thing I could think of yeah. as well. But then I realised I have seen that because I have the Shredder toy from it. To be honest, the oh. Turtles one, two, and three were excellent. The original ones. Oh, they were fucking brilliant, man. Great films. Just terrifying animatronics, though. Bye. Ah, uh, Bebop, Rocksteady, and fucking the Secret of the Ooze was just crazy as fuck. Mm. Really demonic. <laughs> mm -hmm. Shredder was awesome though. But anyway, enough of our childhood. childhood. Right, what we, what we thinking? Uh, get me a get me a party goal, guys, and we'll we'll get it did. We're gonna have to do something with this trail queen. I feel. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like we need to do something productive with this trail queen. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, that's a that's a different goal. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There's my. My plan. There's Cost me three people that want this queen. Well, they want the head. Well, right. One of them wants her head. Head could be like a proverb, right? <laughs> 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 What's a fucking Viscian proverb? When you have the head, you have the goo inside the head. <laughs> I mean, right, so let's let's get ahead. let's get a sentence here, right? For this, right? We don't need steps of it. We need a sentence. So, he's wanted to be about the drug queen, right? And then, <laughs> who gets uh, her? I feel like escape might be the most amenable to dealing with a pile of goop. Yeah, because I mean, like, I'll, like as you're thinking about how to word this this goal, because it doesn't need to be give escape the drug queen. It can be something like you know. Obviously, whatever you used to say to word it as. Just conclude the 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 drag queen problem. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, Hamani wanted her head because, people. like, fundamentally, she embarrassed him, right? Um, yeah. Fundamentally, uh, and also betrayed him. You've got S. Kate, who feels the drow robbed the vault. So, do you remember why S. Kate thought that? Um. Um, so let me take you back a bit. That's a good question. I S. Kate said that she was convinced Aspis Consortium 
with the drow, arrange the attack on the vault. Yes. You right, yeah. do currently work for them. Yes, that's true. Yeah. So. And well, we got like two different stories. Well, we're yeah. not. <laughs> At least. Because like Edgar was apparently working with him, but like. It was. I mean, Edgar was in their uh, fucking throne ship, right? So. So there's a chance he was mm. working with him. I mean, he was imprisoned mm. in the throne ship. Obviously, yeah, you've yeah, got yeah, the conversation with Zig. Like, where's Zig been for a year is a good conversation because Zig spent a lot of time with Edgar running through corridors of hell. So. Not literal hell, specifically. No, it was pretty hellish. Yeah. Sweaty hell. <laughs> so. That's swell. <laughs> so, what's the thoughts? What are we going to award it as? Report the Drow Queen's death to. Hmm. Yeah. Um. Just want to just as resolve the Drow Queen? Because that could be. We can start there. Yeah. yeah. Let's start there. Resolve it's a start. We can we can Queen obviously death. expand it. Yeah. We... Resolve the Drought Queen's death is maybe not a bad one. I will resolve your death. Because as much as I would love to see a specific person we've got to give us this day, I don't know if we're even going to get a choice. Yeah. <laughs> right. And we've also not actually had the conversation in character to decide yet. Yeah. Keep in mind, you've got two and a half ish days to discuss stuff in character before Hermani will show up, as I've said to you. Mm. So. Let's um, make this one one goal, please, on this page, and we'll move on. Cool. I feel like that top one seems fine. <laughs> That'll do. Yup, yup, yup. And MD who wants to can make this page look prettier. I hope you have valued your life, puny mortal, for so and I shall wear it around my neck. <laughs> I mean, there is always the option to put her into jewellery, I guess, but yeah. It's not the worst idea we've had. But... It is not actually, and that is worrying. Um, <laughs> yeah, how is that not the worst? Anyway. Uh, <laughs> I'm enjoying it, it's fine, totally fine. Uh, right, cool. Um, for everybody who's bored at home, um, the reason why we're discussing goals is because this is how we level up now, so this is how people get more, more DACA for their other such things. Dicker. Yeah, that'll do. More Dicker for the Dicker. Uh, right. Where is the ship? There it is. Good. I'd lost the ship for a second there. And that seems unacceptable, quite frankly. Uh, right. right, so... Everyone is... In somewhere. Yeah, that'll do. And then, who am I missing? I'm missing someone. We've got that there, and please stand by. He can put there. I don't think I'm missing Cue anyone. generic else. elevator music. Yeah, you don't like elevators, though, do you? I don't. Yeah. Oh. He doesn't. Maybe in character. I don't IRL. Oh, oh, right. I get the joke now. Oh. Elevators. Oh. Hmm. He caught me deep, man. <laughs> Something, mm. something, first cut is the deepest, you're welcome. I was reading about the Stevens Principle. Mm. Mm. States that uh, in any uh, sequence of cuts, uh, you know, it can be infinitely long no matter how many, the first will always be the deepest. You, you just upset me <laughs> so deeply. Sorry. <laughs> it's just like it's a never ending deepness of sadness. By the way, I found out who wrote it, that's why I said Stevens. It was Cat Stevens. Hmm. Wasn't the first to record it. He was the second to record it, but he wrote it. Also, uh, fuck Cat Stevens. Uh, he goes by Yusuf. Well, Yusuf Islam, but he's, as a recording artist, he's just Yusuf. Um, but you know, he was one of the people who was in the Kill Salman Rushdie train back in the eighties. So fuck you, Cat Stevens, if you're listening. Um, yeah. You cunt. Yeah. Um, 
Murder over books is bad, you piece of shit. There we go. Um, wow. <laughs> Cat here, Stevens bro. one day listens to this, and I'm sorry, <laughs> Cat Stevens, I'm dead naming you. Uh, Cat <laughs> Stevens. Um, then I think he's probably going to be quite offended and probably call for a fatwa against me. But you know what? Uh, I don't know. Please don't call for a fatwa against me. I don't know. I don't think you have that kind of influence. I think wow. Like, oh, like, sorry. do I just wait and see how... How far this goes, or do I st step in? <laughs> this or? is just this is this is just my my rant against uh, the Cat Stevens World Order. Um, yeah, the views know, and opinions expressed songs. in this broadcast do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of the Victor Triumph branding. Thank you. <laughs> it's look, but please don't kill people. <laughs> Unless you're a rapper. I'm gonna. <laughs> Because then it's take a stand <laughs> murder is broadly not okay. In general. And if you're going to murder anyone, don't make it just an author. Right? You know? Right, and books, not about book. that's, that's not That's not kill worthy. You know, you know, there are all sorts of people out there. Gamers, for instance. <laughs> yeah, um, we'll give you a list of people who you can kill instead if you need to you know, right, so uh, exercise those. Moving legs. swiftly on. Okay. <laughs> 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 Fucking hell. <laughs> We found his limit. Oh, oh wow! I mean, it's not just that. It's just is that yeah, all of it. <laughs> it's all true. What? Um. Anyway, right. So these have all boarded the eleventh hour, and my god, does that ship name get more poignant every session? Um. He's all boarded the eleventh hour. Uh. He's then just zip zip zabadoo the fuck away. Um. Torching the corpse pile. That. Uh, Alice left behind at the the doors into the the eleventh hour. Uh, right, who does what initially? What's ever these go to? Like, I think Edgar says he needs to uh, rest, so he asks for a room. Where do you put him? Hmm. Uh, Where the fuck he wants? Christ, get away from us! <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, we do have a spare room, don't we? A cell. <laughs> <laughs> we have one of those, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> God damn it, I'll be thinking. I mean, you actually do have a containment unit, yeah. Oh, just saw him on the news. Minimize us. Um. I don't think we need to really contain him, as I say, because he, uh, he has been... Let us move us to that map, shall I? Doink. Doink. Doink the clan. I've put people um, in places uh, temporarily. You can tell me where you actually went. I can't see the map. Scroll oh, down. It's, yeah, it's cool down. Oh. It's all the way down there. There's a lot of stuff you can't see that I need there. On that page, though. Oh. <laughs> ah. Which one am I? There. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh. Yeah, we've got a spare room for him. Well, I put, I put him here, obviously. Uh, for, yeah. the, for the meantime. Um, nobody actually had that room. I think that was the way the rooms were laid out, because I believe this was um, Emlyn's room, and this was yep. a, an empty room, and Zora sleeps underneath the cockpit <laughs> in the captain's room. As you do. Yes. Yeah. Which is signified by Zora being standing on those stairs. <laughs> yeah, I'll kill the enemy's got. Yup, yup, yup. I don't imagine anything yeah. we've got would contain him anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I, oh, yeah, I just feel like we don't need to contain them generally. Um,. So what's everyone up to? He's, he's, had, he's had every potential to be a threat and hasn't been, so... Mm. The, most threatening the, us. the only threatening thing he's really done was flick a cigarette off of uh, Zora. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. It's the, the feeling I got when we let him out was pretty threatening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Right, so... We're in space. We're flying. <laughs> You tell me what happens on day one of uh, getting the fuck out of Dodge and heading back to Absalom. Um, probably 
I'm probably like head to um, Nix, I guess, and try and. Well, yeah, I guess I'll find it when I get there, I suppose. I'm yes. Good. I'm assuming you'll be on Zibe. I will be, yes. I will be yes. You can be no, or maybe. <laughs> right, so Zora, you head through the ship. You um, you get to the obviously the the Nix room, I guess. And uh, do you do you knock or just walk in or what? What do you do? Like, what? what how do you go in the room? Just head in. I feel like I would knock. I know how Nix can be when he's in super. Study mode, so I'll knock. I'll be pleasant for a change. Okay. So I guess I'll chip the chat. Enter. Enter. Whoosh, Captain. <laughs> so, so uh, about that ooze. Yes. Is there any way for us to distinguish that that's the Queen? The camera does that lingering shot of the assembly ooze in the background, <laughs> and then the canister. And then, like, which ooze do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> that could be the queen assembly ooze, for all we know. <laughs> queen ooze. <laughs> <laughs> um, the way I see it, we've only really got a few options. You can hope that somebody has a genuine artifact that has her DNA on it that we can match it against. Assuming if the DNA survived. We could hope that the stewards have a record of her DNA and hope that it survived. So the stewards she's one involved. <laughs> we have backdoor access to some of them. There's no way to talk about uh, Shakos. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Um, alternatively, I suppose you could try seeking out some sort of magical scholar. <laughs> I would raise an ocular wrench <laughs> to that. Well, magical you... scholar? It would seem she's beyond the hope of most of the technology I'm aware of. But um, Good even just for identification purposes, you could have a third party verify via divination. Divination. I assume it would be possible for somebody to magically detect that this ooze was once a person. And, ah. Uh, Goddamn psychics. <laughs> yes. I don't imagine such services would be cheap. It's hopefully one of our uh, employers would have access to them. I would like to imagine so. They are kind of big employers. Where did which... you just put the Radiant Supreme? That's another thing I need to ask. Um, okay, so give him the, the spare room. Let's Hopefully, somewhere moist. Oh. <laughs> so there. The saltiest of rooms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speaking of employers. Yes. Uh, we are going to be in trouble if we carry. Like, identify this is. Then there's a problem with Edgar, though. I would kind of stare towards the room, past the door, through the door. <laughs> Your fucking x-ray vision kicks in, you see through it. <laughs> are you not being paid to bring him in too? We are, but it seems like that's not going to be as simple as what we thought, given he's, well, well, what we saw when we were on the station. 
Are you reconsidering your you felt position, Captain? I felt when we let him out. The androids do that sort of thing. It's very funny yes. that it's sick to my stomach. <laughs> um, I mean, it's definitely not the normal experience. Do you even know what that was? You don't get that in the Viscari. I can't say I've come across his type before. Um, it, perhaps we should consider our position before turning to Aspis. Well, we should always consider our position when it comes to Aspis. Yes, somehow we don't know. Um, <laughs> See that SAS upgrade got uh, installed? Yeah, the SAS upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, seems we don't consider our position in a lot, of, a lot of situations. See, at this point, while yeah. you're having this conversation as well, what is Lyco currently up to? What was like his first well, thing to do? Lyco's first course of action would be to uh, grab something from the fridge. Um, something that wouldn't be damaged by water, because I assume we have showers in this place, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Right, because he's gonna go and immediately, probably not even fully undressing, just go and s stand in the shower and eat a meal. Cool. Yep. Mm. I think I said before, like all your rooms have that built-in. So. Um, because he is feeling pretty beat up, pretty wiped, and uh, just generally in need of a bit of a rest before he thinks about doing anything. Um. He, I mean, he's not. He's not thinking. He's he's certainly thinking about you know what our steps are going forward. But at the moment, I don't think he's much used to anyone before he is somewhat rested. Hmm. Makes sense. All of the downsides and none of the upsides. Well, hard hard to kill from poisons and shit. But yeah, basically, he's an undead person that still has to rest and what have you, like a living person. So. He's just as wiped as you would expect a normal guy who's been through that to be. He's a living dead boy. Yeah, living dead boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. So you you go off and you have a a shower. Um, yeah. Zig, what are you up to? I think Zig's kind of in the same sort of mindset of just want to sit, eat something, and just hold a shiny thing. So. My question is, do you spend time with the Radiant Supreme, or do you spend it alone and leave him alone? Um, I think I'll leave him be because I think he's um, just like, he needs rest time. Mm. He's probably also standing in the shower eating a meal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like the sort of like split screen of them doing the exact same thing. Yeah, but I think uh, it's like, you've got obviously Lyco's slightly almost melancholy version of the whole thing. Versus, like, the Radiant mm -hmm. Supreme probably, like, kind of yeah. happily scrubbing under his arms and stuff like that, getting the water in <laughs> about everywhere he possibly can. this <laughs> water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, probably one of those horribly gratuitously nude, nude scenes that we get, where you get some um, slug ass on camera for the first time. <laughs> it's yeah. exactly what we didn't want to see. <laughs> where Lyco goes in fully clothed and just sadly eats. <laughs> uh, right, cool. Yeah. But yeah. I like that. That's that's basically what Zig's doing, he's just kind of um kind of just trying to think of happy thoughts. Yeah. Makes sense, yeah. Uh what about you guys in the cargo bay? What are you up to now? How does the conversation develop? Like what's the um, goal of the conversation as far as Zora is concerned? What did you go to kind of discuss? Zara. Oh, my mic was rooted. Uh, I just went to discuss. Um, quite, but honestly, I mean, that was that. It's a pretty pointless discussion, but it's fine. It's fine. I guess how does that discussion end? What's the, the part? I words? mean, I guess, like, just as I say that we probably don't think about many of our decisions when it comes to, like, the big corporations. I can't exactly remember exactly what it was his, but I probably just, like, scratch my head frustratedly. Like, because I'm just thinking about the fact that, okay, nah, 
stuck in a wee bit of a hard place. I guess I'd probably just gee like next a wave. It's like, well, I'll let you get back to it. I'm gonna go sleep because I'm actually in a lot of pain. <laughs> <laughs> I think as the captain turns to leave, Nick should probably uh, say, perhaps with our next paycheck, we could consider installing a medical facility. I would look at my probably smoldering scales and be like, that's eh, probably a good idea. <laughs> I like the way that shot that clicks back for when Nyx asks that and it clicks back to Zora, there's this smoke still coming off of Zora. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, put, I'll set the funds aside. <laughs> I'll, I'll nod Appreci- as I'm leaving. Appreciate you, Captain. Although I don't think it will help your queen. <sighs> I would say you just hear a sigh as I'm walking at the door. <laughs> <laughs> We're not sure if it's the door opening or if it's just Zora. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, cool. Um, does anybody want to do anything on day one specifically then? Like, just want to tell me what you want to do with your time? Or is everybody just want to recover on day one? I think day one for day is definitely a recovery day. Uh-huh. I okay. think the cargo hold, there's just laid out loads of equipment, everything that was used. Yeah. It's kind of been uh, taken apart and reconditioned, pieced back together. Scooping bits of draw out of it, yeah. Yeah, cool. and anything else that people have left, probably. Good um, I think Zig would probably polish his, um, his little amulet. Um, Good. In a half meditative state. Oh, I know, it's just, it's just sitting there. Waiting to be touched. I'm not going to touch it. It's too easy. Carry on. <laughs> um, <laughs> this episode is sponsored by Filth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> that probably is a site. So do we. Uh, right, okay then. Well, if we do that, we can do a long rest. Everybody can reset what you need to reset on a long rest. Um, obviously, you, cover one hit point. you can officially uh, all be... Uh, Level five. Yes. Bush. Wee. Bush. Um. Yes. How is Zig for healing during the day? How is Zig for healing? When I get that healing. When I get that healing. Hey, hold on. Let me reset my stuff. Badoop. Badoop. I can give out lots and heals and heals. We like. I feel like that's the exact answer I next what? needed. <laughs> well, um, let's see. Well, no, I, I need. To, oh no, no, I can. Yeah, that's fine. I can do. Mm. I can do one mystic cure, and I can do a ten-minute city, not so good healy thing. Is that just when you sit and sing with them for a bit? Yeah. Doesn't actually heal them. Just like, it's more just like, you know, morale just healing. the heal theme tune at them. Oh. <laughs> 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 ah, that's the part when the, the Radiant Supreme walks in and he goes, duh, 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 starts patting his belly with his towel around him. <laughs> um, I can give, give, you, give you an old healing, healing touch. Oh. Uh, well, I'm, so I can, oh, actually, no, that's not bad. Up to five hit points for a mystic level, that's not too bad. Yeah, because the standard at the moment that we're getting is one oh. HP per character level for night's rest. Mm. So that's 25 there, or um, I can do one. Or your money back. Cure. Or <laughs> your money back, or one mystic cure, which is 3d8 plus something. Well, who's in need of health? Put it that way, because. So who wants. who who. Who who wants he- uh, heals? Because who's going to spend resolve points or whatever? Because can't you do that to heal as well? Or you can spend resolve points to get your stamina back, but mm-hmm. your oh, yeah, HP sure. recovers. HP isn't back to normal. Mm-hmm. At the moment, we are on gaining five HP per rest, mm-hmm. or twelve. Ten HP per complete bed rest for twenty four hours. Mm. Twenty four hours of bed rest, Jesus. I mean, you just have the time. <laughs> Right? 
Do we have any medical resources to expedite this? Or is it just did, like did you, I have I have you some, got like your med kit. Yeah. I actually have a med kit. Which <laughs> reason he's called med kit? <laughs> that was the conversation that I had with the captain as well. Oh. Please, we need we need to improve this. And I don't yeah. recall seeing any of that on the shopping list. No, I thought about it, but I've got this instead. I don't think we've got like, the money in the ship bank to be able to do it as well. Easy. But... Probably. Well, and depending on what you do with the Aspis, they might just do it for you. Yeah, true, because that was part of the deal. Old ship upgrade. Mm. But then, you'd need to go for Edgar. It, it's, I mean, yeah, we need to do that. I'm stuffed. I, mean, I don't care about that, personally. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I'm thinking is that being as, you know, prioritise the healing out. Other than that, do some. What, what kind of healy checks can you make with a med kit? Actually, I don't. I don't have a med kit. I don't know what they do. Are they just for stabilising, or they can actually heal? The the medicinal section is very vague. <laughs> Lo and behold, surprise, surprise. Yep. <laughs> Kill the supreme. <laughs> right, let's go to the equipment section. Medicinals. Tier 1. Tier 1 medicinals. Yes. Is there... Blah, 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 blah. I think the only things that you can actually use to heal are... Like the magic vial things, is it not? Um, I mean, you can get a medical kit. I think it does help. Let me see, I don't know if it's in the armory actually. Mm. Yeah, so the, what I'm thinking of is the yeah. Serum of Healing. Yeah, so there's the Serum of Healing, but there's also a medical box, basically, we can use. Mm -hmm. If we can... I don't know the official actual name of it. Uh, no, let me just... Hmm. Stay tuned, folks at home. We'll keep your health appraised. Well, I won't be hugely healthy after just a day's rest. Uh, well, you had five HP on. Yes, I'll for be at twelve. Unless you take a twenty-four hour bed rest, kind of full recovery mode, which again, you've got two and a half ish, maybe a bit more days. Almost three days before Hamani will show up, so you are welcome to take the time, and it still gives you like about a day to have a what conversation. Do you think, guys? Uh, I think if you've got nothing else to be working on, yeah, bed rest is probably the best. I think, thing yeah, to there's definitely lost if you're screwed. You should be done beforehand, but we do need to heal up. Mm. Okay, so take the extra day, bump up the health a little bit higher. So wasn't it if you take a full 24 hour rest you'll get all your health back? Uh, no, you get 2 HP per character level. Ooh. So yeah, ten. so that would bring me up to 17 health, which is still not a great amount. Isn't it? Um, no, no, like, so for you, you're, you're at level 5, you'd get 10 health back, not 5. Yeah, uh. but it's fi it's, uh, 5 was already included because I was going to have a overnight rest. Ah, right, okay. So I, I thought twelve was what you before. had been on previously. That was all. No, it was, it was seven. Right, oh god. I was, yeah. I was pretty close to death. Yeah. 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 I, I recall this so now. I. The second fight, you got hammered the most. Mm. Yeah. I think you got hammered pretty badly the first one as well. Ah, you did. You did. Oh, there we go. Medicine, long-term care. You can use medicine to provide long-term care to a living, wounded creature. The medical bay. Day or more. Do you need a medical bay or...? Uh, there's a medical facility or medical bay on a ship. 
purposes. Yes, it requires a medical lab, a medical bay on a starship. Yeah, we, we, we can get one of those in the future. Medicine. But that does heal wounds, yes. Or HP. Yips. Or you just have a doctor. Right? I mean, I've got, yeah. I've got a very good medical skill. I have just a laughable medical skill. My medical skill is medical 11. Skill. That's pretty good. I just don't have a lab to good. do anything. Mm. Uh, no, my medical skill isn't that good. Well, actually, it is. My medical skill, because I haven't looked at it in ages. Ah, yeah. Yeah, it's one. Yeah. <laughs> Big fat zero. If you have a medical kit, I can treat deadly wounds. So. That's pretty decent. Yeah. Why don't you have a medical kit? Because I want to buy a gun instead. Yeah, because I bought a heavy <laughs> suit of armor, mounted weapons on it, and uh, yeah, here we are. It's like a medical kit, but kind of preemptive. You know, they say prevention is the best, is better than cures. Yeah. The best uh, offense is a good offense. And the yes. Best the best offence is the best offence. It was the best offence. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, right, okay. So, who's on what condition now? Uh, if, I a, if I take a full day, I go up to 18. I've had 15, because I'm on 15, because I said I'd sit and do equipment work. Okay. Make sure everything's working. Right. Okay, so that's after day one, isn't it? Yes. Cool. What's everybody doing in day two? Okay, I feel like he's maybe when I call him. Like... <laughs> yeah, I, th I think we should. I think we should discuss matters. Staff meeting. Let's go. Staff meeting. Well, get to the meeting room. La 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 la. la. And are you inviting other people? Yes, yeah, Radiant Supreme can come. Fuck Edgar. <laughs> <laughs> Zora got lost. It's fine. Sorry, Daddy walked into the not I. <laughs> the f <laughs> the engine room. <laughs> the, the job drive. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it really is just. Imagine it was just powered by an eye of Janus crystal. <laughs> it's like, how do you actually warp places? Oh, just to open portals to the god of Janus. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. That's, I mean, that's pretty much what you do in this yeah. anyway. Yep. So, sorted. Um, just open that warp portal. <laughs> Oh, how true that is, given the state Janus was in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, so... Lyco, you gonna join us? Yep, one sec, sorry. Fashionable. Been. Fashionable elite. Completely fashionable. Cool. Here we are. So... Who... Who's calling the meeting? Probably the captain, right? Probably. Yeah. Cool. Um, well, on you go. So. Where are we at? <laughs> Radiant Supreme is definitely in like a towel. Still. <laughs> Just sat slumped with like belly folds on belly folds with a towel over his shoulders as well. Oof. Just looking tired. If you're still too exhausted, you you don't need to be here. Um, he kind of like just waves like his weird fingerly. Supreme. Fingerly? Yeah, that'll do. He waves his fingerly. Fingerly. Mm -hmm. That'll do. Uh, this is what I mean. You see his hands. He just kind of waves that like to dismiss you. It's a lot of fingers. Yeah. So, I guess we should probably discuss the conversation. That is, right, you uh, cut out quite a bit there. Yeah, you, you cut out quite a lot, a lot. Let's try uh, all that testing. again. Yeah. Testing. So yep. I guess we should probably discuss the current situation and that is we currently owe biggest criminals in the universe, biggest bank in the universe, and a bunch of dragons, the same person's head. And we don't have that head. Um might have a bit of a head. Uh, yeah. Well I like to believe that the vial, like the kind of flask things in the middle of the table. <laughs> I think O oh, is the wrong word. Did we accept payment from anyone other than Asmus? Not particularly. I don't think so. But um, I don't know if dragons see it that way. Uh, I, I would nod. 
Yes, well, I mean, dragons are uh, notorious for their. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to say greed, but. Interesting sense of possession. Yeah. Yeah. You don't like to see it. Dragon syndrome. <laughs> 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 They they are notorious for for their tendency to obsess over their possessions, and I think we have to fulfill our obligation. In this case, that would be to Aspis. In an ideal world, I would agree, but I don't think SK will see the. Same view either. No, she doesn't seem to like it when we help arms dealers. Well, look at it this way: the uh, the drow queen is already out of the equation. We we can't hand her over alive. We can't really make uh, furler happy we can placate her perhaps um we uh we can point out to her look it was impossible for us to take her in alive circumstances prevented it we'd only need a small amount gestures towards the jar i think as you like point at a jar you're like you know we have the camera looking at Lyco from, say, Zig's point of view, for example, and then the jar is in the middle. You see, like, Alice is staring through it like a child would. Um, this kind of purple goop. You see her eyes all kind of, like, magnified comedically because she's very, very interested. And also, just for the, the viewers at home and everybody's visual reference, Alice's design now is a lot sleeker, and that black suit has been refined even more. She's very... Um, Back to what our hologram looked like, because our hologram is projecting over the suit entirely now. So yeah, she looks like how you first met her, only now with a solid core. Ooh. Yeah. So yeah, she's just kind of staring at the thing. We um. We can explain the current situation. Provide well. It'll have to be a decent sample, I suppose, because there's no guarantee that, uh... Well, there's no guarantee all of the matter originated from the same individual. Um... But there should be enough in there that if we give her a part of it, she could assess it. Her resources must be pretty damn considerable. And, uh, when she does assess it, you find that, yeah, we... we we removed the threat, and that's at least something. Look, I'm sure she'll. I'm sure she'll understand that uh, the drow wouldn't necessarily be welcoming of our interruption. Uh, how much other than that we tell her? Well, we're gonna have to explain why the queen's turned into goop. But do we tell her about? exactly how that happened I don't know but I, I think I think we've got enough there that we can I think as you're saying all this like Alice just kind of like looks up at you and goes do we know how that happened yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, d right sorry I'm gonna I got a character for a second mm -hmm. did we rule to identify that thing um, I don't think so. Right, so we don't know yet if we did recognise it. I mean, I feel like a bunch of people were paralysed in various places, so... I mean, what, are we talking culture checks here? Yeah. Do you want everybody just roll one now and we'll see what happens? We'll see who got uh -huh. what? Okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Let's do some rolls. Sure. Boom. Get a bit of culture in you. There we go. We've got all that culture. I was kind of just hoping everybody would just have got 29 that. would be nice. 
It's like, sorry guys, the pass mark was 30. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. I don't think it's that uh, abstract to think that you just recognise it. And here's the question. Has anybody really filled in Zig on what they experienced properly in Baskerville? Because how much would Zig really be able to put together? This is what I'm asking. I'm not questioning it. I'm asking. It's a good question, actually. I don't mm. know. Remember, how Zig, much Zig doesn't have the and... year of catching up. Yeah. I honestly don't know if we've actually had a chance to fill in Zig. No. And so so much time. stuff has happened. Mm -hmm. I'm and fairly then... confident we've referred to some of it in front of you. Oh, well, we've definitely we'd, we'd done the whole briefing in front of Edgar. Like, the brief not truth, truth. And Zig was there. Yeah, I definitely have that part. He knows that he knows that he doesn't know about the crazy secret creature though, because we didn't even mention that to Edgar. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we had that time that we were working on the conspiracy Craig device. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Nix would have told Zig anything that he asked. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of like how much Zig would actually ask though. Like mm -hmm. Yeah, because it depends I mean, how shiny kind of things like... were described, right? Really? Yeah, and like you, you don't, you know, when you know when mom and dad comes home from work, you as a child, you don't go, oh hey, uh, how was your day? What did you do at work? Yeah. Today? you just know they went to work, they did whatever they do at work, and they came back, and you hear bits and bobs, and it's like, oh, that's quite interesting. Back to shiny things. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So, really, at this point, Callum, I'm asking you, do you really think Zig would recognize it even with a roll of like fifty? Do you know what I mean? Do you really think? Zig would know anything about the creature beyond what Callum knows. Speaking of which, actually, I shouldn't have even rolled because I didn't even see the creature. I was told about it, but I wasn't yeah. there when it got out and stuff. I was too busy busting the doors and stuff. Mm. I don't think. I don't think in unless it, someone actively went out. Oh, by the way, mm -hmm. we find this weird creature thing and let it loose into space. Because um. like the reason why I think Zora's happy to have kept the role is because you were told about it by your crew. Yeah, I was at least told about it. Yeah. And watching what it did and how it was like visually there, etc., is enough for me, mm. for you to be like that's that seems to be that thing they described, and given the reactions of Rodios, yeah. Whereas Zig, it's mm. primarily Zig's knowledge because obviously Zig's been the most separate from the group. So yeah, what do you think, Callum? Much? Do you think you'd have enough to piece it together, or do you think you actually don't know what it is? I I don't think he'd know what it is without someone like either suggesting it or saying, "Oh, this was that," and then all the way, what's that? So really, it depends on how Callum answers that question, then, doesn't it? Uh, is that Callum? Sorry, um, Lyco, I guess. How Lyco okay. answers the, <laughs> "Do we know what caused this?" And then obviously, oh, if Zig picks up on it. Uh, I think he'd probably be somewhat forthcoming because I mean, this is a, a fellow party member that's asking about it and it is very much a sort of safe environment to discuss mm -hmm. this because although you never know who's going to react with what, he, he is he's sort of naturally inclined to keep some things close to his chest mm -hmm. like cops training, training and all that Yeah. Um, but I think yeah in this in the circumstances he'll be quite Happy to share. So yeah, um, let's let's swing it back to Alice saying, "Do we know how this happened?" Uh yeah, I got a got a pretty good idea. The uh, there was an entity on Baskerville. Chango, uh huh. Mm -hmm how aware you were of it, but it may have been an organic entity, may have been a purely psychic entity, I don't know, but it was contained. You may recall we tried to vent. So Alice like sits up in the chair and then just stares at you, puts a hand on your shoulder really solemnly and goes, I was there, Lyco. Well, so was it. The, uh, the thing we tried to vent points towards the uh, the goop. Just yeah. sort of, not 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 like an out and out like yeah, but like point no, like, like yeah, you point to it and it it. But I actually like she quickly grabs it off the table and like kind of clutches it preciously and is like oh, this is the thing. 
No. <laughs> no, that's what it did to two powerful drow. And she's kind of like sloshing it. I think when you tip it up and down so that it moves. I tried to make sure it was mostly the one we wanted, but there's almost certainly some of her. I don't know what he was, head of guard or something. And she's like, how do you tell? And she's constantly turning it over so the bubble goes up. <laughs> I scooped the spot she was standing on. Ah, the scientific approach. Yeah. I've always considered myself a scientist. <laughs> <laughs> she, no she nods like once and just sits it carefully back in the, the centre of the table. So, yeah, he... He? It? I think he? Whatever it might have been. Um, and she like, she opens her palms and they project, like, scenes from the episode, if you will. Uh, and it's like, from her viewpoint, the, the lab room with like the containment field and the big cocoon thing. And like, it flickering and like breaks almost in the, the footage, as it were. And then the creature uh, standing in front of the group. And it's like freeze framed on that. I think, I think the zig's eyes like widen. He puts his like hands on the table and just, like kind of leaning more and more into it. Like what? Yeah. And then Alice turns and says like to, like, Zig. I guess it called itself Urgalas. Urgalas. It spoke. Something old. Don't suppose you would recognise it, Mr. Supreme. And then, uh, <laughs> like he's kind of like kind of like pawing at his face with his weird hand, and <laughs> uh, fingerly. Yeah, his fingerly, his fingerly, his chin, <laughs> and um, yeah, who's got good sense motive? Yeah, who, 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 who's 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 going to be trying to gauge the uh, the supreme? That's a like thing. Who, I've got minus one. Who wants to roll? Let me add a double check. Us. So <laughs> crap. Um, I think I've got. I have four, but I also think Zig would be inclined to just like. What, sorry, what are we rolling? Sense motive. Sense the motive. Oh, all right, sorry, I missed you saying it. Yeah, yeah. On I the supreme. I, it's actually not my strongest one. I rolled, I uh -huh. rolled prematurely, but that that was a decent roll. It can stand if you like. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Uh, who else? I don't have good sense move. <laughs> Neither does Nick's. Um, <laughs> so I mean, you may as well. <laughs> I mean, I'll try it. I guess I'll try it. Um, I just like someone minus one and being fired. <laughs> Dex is deceivered. He looks something like a slug. Oh well, well then. I mean, and the captain yeah, goes well, for gold. <laughs> wow. The captain thinks he's a human. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Emmeline, what do you think? <laughs> oh dear. Hi, Olka. Um. Uh. Right, let's see. Do I have stats for this for um, my character here? Let's see. How bluffy is this one? Wow, um, Alice got four on her roll. Nice. Mm -hmm. well, that makes sense. This is, she this is going great. She, she, two she rolled a one. <laughs> it took the two races that are inherently bad at sense and both. To be fair, I think nobody expected Alice to read anything well. So, <laughs> but yeah. So the Radiant Supreme sitting, kind of pawing at his face, fingerly, and uh, yeah, like you can tell that he's acting like maybe everybody else believes it just because this is a weird slug man and he's hard to read. And also, he's the Radiant Supreme. Yeah, and Does obviously, like anything that comes out of his weird slug mind. Yeah, and he's. He's pretty well known in terms of anybody that knows about, like the 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 solar monastery that Zig's from, uh, which I imagine all of you know about because Zig's which never I shot expect up everyone knows <laughs> a substantial amount about. Well, I mean, how many people have been mind linked with you that you've just forced all of your knowledge onto them? So, yeah, I think most people know just how reverent like he is thought of, um, 
and how long he's kind of looked after the place, etc. I, but yeah, like what you can tell, something's not quite right about the way he answers this. But he shuffles in his seat and then puts his hand down on the the table. And he leans in a, a little bit, as if you know, joining the conversation, like he's been welcomed to the party conversation instead of just being additionally there. And he goes, uh, I don't seem to recognize it at all. Huh. Oh well. Mm. So, Michael, this is like when you're asking someone how was the cocaine when they're covered yeah. in white powder. <laughs> <coughs> so, uh... No, no recognition at all. Like he kind of like moves his hand, leans back in the chair, and like adjusts the towel around his shoulders, and just kind of slumps a bit, and then just kind of blinks at you, as if. And you've had this before. This is him waiting to see if you're going to challenge him. You know. So, for example, so, uh, if like if you're trying to interview someone, like, and you're saying. So, do you know this thing? And then you're waiting to go them into something, so they sit back and go, No! And they wait for you to have to push further. I'm just, I'm just curious. If you don't know what it was, why do you look so uncomfortable right now? I, um, I must be drying out. And he kind of, like, stands up. And then goes and just walks back to the room. <laughs> oh, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he does it pleasantly <laughs> enough, like a doddering old man, but, like, yeah. He's. I don't like, it. like a big wet patch on the seat before. behind him. <laughs> what was that? I don't like any sense more if they noticed that was a swerve. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. So Zig believes him. Yeah. Uh, what was that all about? Yeah, because I guess to everybody else saying, I straight at Michael. I I I I I'll put a hand on your shoulder. Kid he's fucking lying. Oh. And he's not very good at it. What? Wait a minute! <laughs> How dare you? How dare you have the audacity to say something like that? I put up his hands, a sort of gesture of peace. I'm not saying that he's our enemy or that he's up to something particular. I, he I would know. never lie about something like this. Why not? I'm sorry, he says, like, all we does lie. Well, how can you even trust Zora saying that? God. I mean, I lie all the time. I say the Vis the Viscarium's a great place. Like, and Alice leans in it and cuts you off like, really excitedly going, and if it's for the good of the party, we, we have to, or maybe I should say crew, the good of the crew, uh, we're allowed to lie. And she, like, points at the table as if confirming it. I would actually agree with you, because that's actually a perfect, perfect time for her to use my knowledge at. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you did teach her that, so... so sometimes <laughs> I'm so happy that for is, her. Uh, that is a good point of view. Um, and she, like, finger guns Lyco next to her. Like. <laughs> Return them. Yep. Uh, tr truth, uh, truth gets a lot of people killed if they're in the, the wrong line of work, so... I'm not saying your Radiant Supreme is a bad guy. I'm saying he maybe he has his reasons not to want to appear to know what he knows. Maybe he's afraid or maybe he doesn't trust us. Or maybe he's just trying to protect us. Never know. Maybe. Or maybe he's trying to protect himself. You know yourself, Sig, that he never told you everything when you Uninitiated. It could be that he won't tell us, but he might tell you. Uh, 
but you couldn't lie. Do, do. Hmm. There's a difference between lying. And he just kind of slumps in his chair for a little bit. <laughs> Stares See? at his thumbs. Right, can I, I, I can pause everybody now, right? Who would have an item of clothing that would be the equivalent of like a scarf or like a proper handkerchief type thing or something like that? Not on them now, but in their quarters. Who is the type of person that would have something like that? I'd probably have something like that in my suit of form. Probably. Yeah. A rag think, with mach machine oil on it. Because I think um, as soon as like Zig starts to get upset, like Alice just leaves the room just without even announcing. Carry on. Um, I think that I know species age at different rates, but experience doesn't, uh, unless you're like a time traveler, the amount of time you've been around is the amount of time you've been around, regardless of how much you've changed and matured in that time. Uh, I know sometimes I can come across a little bit uh Patronizing. And at it's... that point, like she's come back, she sits down and she hands you like Lyco's scarf <laughs> to like wipe your tears. <laughs> that kind of looks at it, like grabs it, and just kind of just looks at it. Now I think instead of consoling you, she hands you the scarf because she assumes she knows you know what to do with it, like as if it's some kind of tissue, and then she consoles Lyco. <laughs> <laughs> just like pats his leg when maybe you notice that she's given him like the scarf thanks Alice um, she kind of nods solemnly but my, my point was kid, that you've not been around that long you've not had the chance to see the people that you've trusted and believed in screw up and fail and turn out not to be who you thought you were, they were maybe this guy isn't one of these people that's going to disappoint you, maybe he is I, I don't know but w what I do know is that I seldom see anyone so obviously dodge a question he, he just he just didn't want to tell the truth and that's not necessarily a reflection on his character or his faith in, I don't know, the fucking sun. But I do know, I do know people and I do know lies. Uh, you can be the best liar in the world. Someone will spot you. You know, it's always chance. It's always a game of chance. And he, he tossed a coin and if I hadn't been here, you would have believed him. These other guys, well, not necessarily the best at reading humanoid emotions, so oh, good on. he probably <laughs> would have got away. No, no one questioning a damn thing if I hadn't been here. That's just the way it is. I, I don't know how to tell you this, but if you're around as long as some of us have been, and I'm not exactly ancient, but I've seen a lot of people. I've seen a lot of good people lie their asses off. And, here, uh, like under her breath, for the good of the crew. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and she nods. <laughs> I need you to be prepared to discover what he does know. Because if it isn't what you think, yeah, it's going to be a shock, but I need to I need you to know that you can handle the shock. I think what he's trying to say, Zig, this is Alice leading in, is don't get electrocuted if you don't have to. That is... I think they could actually good smile advice. at that. <laughs> you kind of clutch the scarf a little and bit And then like, well. she winks, and she's like, take that from someone who runs on electricity. <laughs> and then she gets up and leaves. <laughs> yeah. I would kind of snuggle at that. 
<laughs> just be like, besides the point, I mean, you don't get a sort of soppy shit for me often, but you're probably stronger than most of us here for your age. Like, I'm pretty sure whatever he tells you, you'll be able to handle. I think it'll just do that sort of... Hmm. Lyco, um... If there's anybody's sense that I'm going to trust, it's probably going to be him. He's not been much. I mean, what's right? I think you, I think you cut out a wee bit from me. Yeah. Um, I was just saying that there's probably not. Well, if there's anybody's like sense that I would trust, it would be Lyco's because he's not been wrong about much so far. He does have a way with people. I like the idea that Lyco has a small thought bubble, and it's just everything he did with Sindale, and then snaps back to the meeting room dismissively. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't want to, it's not like I, I necessarily enjoy being right about people, but I, I think I know my stuff, and there's something he knows. It might not even be anything useful, but for some reason, he didn't want to be in that conversation. M maybe he just knows enough to be scared, I don't know, but he knows something. Um, okay, okay, and Zig would just look up at Lyco and kind of half smile. You smile back. Oh. So we gotta be gentle with that. Let's think about what else we have to deal with. Cap. Hmm. Clearly, you didn't want our um. Former Smiles back. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are we what are we doing with with that? Ah, <laughs> uh, well, for now, I don't think we should let on our business with M O. That's for sure, because I don't even know what we're dealing with when it comes to that man anymore. <laughs> I thought I did, but yeah. I'm not too sure anymore. I gotta admit, he uh, he got past me, but he is not human. Can I have a Nyx and Zora roll perception? Yes. That'll do. <laughs> the double eighteens. <laughs> Yep, so as you say that, isn't not human, dot dot dot, uh, you just hear like the crunch of an apple, and uh, he's leaning against the wall where like the, the doors are for the the canteen. Zora and uh, Nyx obviously either hear or spot the edge of him, as he's kind of just leaning casually against the, the wall. I'm not from this galaxy, but... From what I heard, it was rude to eavesdrop, Mr. Wesland. You just hear like another crunch. I think we'd turn around. <laughs> and then, uh, he kind of just like casually walks in and then just, uh, I think he'd awkwardly walk all the way around actually and just sit there and put his feet up on the table and just take another bite. He's like, well, invite me in. It won't be rude then. <laughs> Get off the table. <laughs> <laughs> he, like, he puts his hands out to the sides, much like Lyco would have moments ago, and then uh, he like, takes one foot off really slowly, and then the other foot off and puts them on the ground. And then just does that thing where he tilts his hands as if, we good? I would nod. So, since you're here, what exactly are you? And he kind of sets the apple down on the table. He's like, you know, you're only supposed to ask questions to which you want to know the answers to. And you want to ask better questions than that. Hmm. My guess... Uh, Not human. That's a good guess. And he kind of like yeah, just nods. Start. Yeah, uh, Not many of us are. <laughs> devil? Hmm. He kind of like so smir fiend. He smirks at Lyco and he says devil. And he's like, Devilishly handsome, perhaps. <laughs> I mean, like, like flicks his collar a tiny bit. 
Well... So how did those goblins manage to capture something like you? And he puts his finger up because someone like me is um, prone to heavy drinking. <laughs> and he's like, he just kind of like puts like his hand under his chin as if to support his, his neck and he's like, do you have anything to drink on this ship? I think we've got plenty. Um, well, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> you were in grain spirits, weren't you? <laughs> Fucking still set up in the, the engine room. <laughs> 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 but yeah, so he's kind of just waiting as, to see if you're going to offer him a drink or get him a drink or. Like, uh, he's not gesturing Riddler or anything, he's just kind of like, he's left that hanging enough to be like. Am I getting a drink? I would I would start up and just grab a bottle, like mm. slide it along the table. And he kinda like he oh, gets it and the cheapest he, looking crap that I can find. Yeah, and he like he opens the kinda <laughs> like the bottle up, he sniffs it, he looks a bit like, Oh that'll do. And then uh, he looks around as if looking for a glass and he goes, Hmm, when in the uh, Yeah. And then uncorks it and just starts to like neck it, essentially. He would have said when in Rome had it been appropriate. But he just yeah. says, when in a... has long since been lost. Well, then, actually, did Rome even exist in this universe? Probably not. No. But I like the idea that it's when in ellipsis, you know? <laughs> so yeah, he just kind of necks the bottle a bit. And then sits back. So my thinking at the moment is that those goblins were probably mercenaries. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the bottle hits the table, as soon as you say that. So, let me point at you, Lyco. How deep are you? Only waves his hand vaguely. How deep are you all with my former employer? And he just looks at all of you as if, yeah. Oh, you mean M.O.? Mm. It's almost like something bad tasting hit his mouth there when you say that. And he's like, yeah, M.O. Would snuggle and say she did offer me your job. <laughs> and he, he like picks up the bottle and then kind of like almost as if like saluting you. And he's like, you know, you might even be uh, half good at it. And he sticks a swig and it oh, offers so you the bottle. I was kind of snuggle. I was kind of and say, like, but judging by how quick she was willing to discard you, uh, I decided not to take that job. And then he's like, like so he's held out this bottle for you, but he, and if you don't take it, he'll just like wave it, but. What do you do? Uh, I, I would kind of just close my eyes, shake my head. Like, so he waves the bottle as if to dismiss. No, no. Not discard. Destroy. And he kind of just, like, looks dead into your eyes. Discard. Destroy. What's the difference? Reusability. Hmm. I think pirate drawers in the Viscarium are different. Sense of discard. <laughs> it was like, yeah, think more like your um, invasion tactics. I was a problem for Emma O. And it would make sense that goblins wouldn't be able to enter her building without her knowing it. <laughs> They're not known for their technological savviness. I kind of like mm. them. Like, he smirks at that comment. Uh, he's like, goblin ingenuity aside, that's not why I was uh, taken or captured. I'm not as... and he looks around the room as if the person that's waiting to not insult someone's like, I'm not incompetent. I was targeted. I don't think you did so well against them either. And he kind of like just... Glances at Zora. Hmm. You're not wrong. They're quite crafty little buggers. Especially the one with a crazy eye. They all have crazy eyes to me. He kind of like sets the bottle down, reaches into his jacket, and pulls out his e cig. And just like puts it in his mouth. And then uh, just kind of sits for a second, quiet. So. Like, obviously if somebody's going to jump in, you could jump in now. So, back to the matter at hand. How did they? 
managed to get you. You, you, you dodged that question pretty well. <laughs> he like, he puts his hands up to the cigarette and pulls it out of his mouth, and he's like, are the details really that interesting? Hmm. Perhaps. How do they progress this situation of gestures around at the ship? <laughs> well, I mean, it's not like we're going anywhere. You should probably have a word with your pilot then. <laughs> yeah, well... She yeah. did walk out the wrong way. About <laughs> that. It's another thing I had to speak to you about. Fucking about with Emil Emlyn and stuff. Raises an eyebrow. What do you mean? Well, I guess you didn't notice that she's not here anymore. He looks around. He's like, oh yeah. You wouldn't happen to have anything to do with that? No. Why would I? She's just barely an employee of an employee. What is it you call her? Friend? Yeah. Friend of an employee. Then, any ideas what exactly your previous employer might want me? Yeah, it, seem to have taken it looks a bit shocked at this. Her. It looks a bit shocked. It's like, why would my... What? And he's just like, as if, what is this? Where is this going? Like, so, looks a bit confused. People who can roll sense motive if they want to see if he's faking the fact that he's like, what, what are you even talking about? It's up to you guys. Now I'm going to wait for it to play out. Okay. Yeah, I'm... I'm... Zara? See, when I did have a little chat with her, she seemed to have taken quite the interest in her. And the last thing I saw was her walking off with MO and a projection of you, quite frankly. I kind of, um... Like... Puts the cigarette down. Like he saw his hands on the table holding it. He's like, me. Yes, and I tried to punch you in the elevator. Don't remember this? I wasn't there. What you've seen was not me. I would kind of slam my fist on the table and say, well, do you mind and tell me what the fuck I saw in that elevator? <laughs> be, be careful, you're scaring the goo. And he takes a draw of his cigarette. So obviously when you slammed the table, the goo would have rattled, obviously. I'm getting beyond the point of jokes, Edgar. None of this is particularly funny. You're accusing me of things I haven't done. Don't think I've done is financially look after you. What interest would I have in your pilot? Hmm. <laughs> what's going through? Right, so let's here we go. Like, what, what's going through Zora's head? So, like, well, I mean, I don't know what I'm getting for this. Is it like feigning ignorance to ever fucking with Emily ever? Uh, that's what I'm wondering here. Hmm. I mean, Emily did so tell you guys. Tell me they, Emily did tell you guys that like she made a deal with Edgar in some random apartment. I think she did go as far as that and tell she you guys. Tell she yeah. did tell us, because that's why I was storming over mm -hmm. to, like, CMO in the first place, is because I was going to tell him a new one to mm -hmm. um, So what you're saying is you've never had any sort of dealings with my pilot? You're my contact. And he, like, he points, like, his cigarette hand at you. He's like, you're my contact. I deal with you. You deal with these guys. And he kind of waves gestures, like, gestures to the party. Although I'm getting quite fond of this one, and he points at Zig. So he kind of smiles a little bit. He kind of like winks very quickly at you. Like a, okay. a, a, a side wink, if you will. Cap, I understand that this is uh, a particularly frustrating moment for you because, well, you're the captain, she's your pilot. But 
she only had dealings with a psychic entity that appeared as Edgar. Just kind of scratch my head. Right. Then who the fuck was it? <laughs> I'm guessing, but who did she go and work for? I've never encountered this MO, but would it be unreasonable of me to assume that it's likely she has some form of abilities beyond what are normal? Whether I've, it be psychic or mystical. And again, if you're looking at his face when you say that, like as soon as you mention MO, it's like a bad smell comes in the room, like his face all like contorts a little. Like he like shakes off, takes a draw of his e sig. And he's like M.O. My former employer, as you can imagine, isn't quite. Kind of looks over at Nix. Human. And like lingers on Nix for a second. Much like myself. And he kind of like waves his hand vaguely towards you, Lyco. How much like yourself? Oh, well, nothing like me. Takes a draw. Like, right off his cigarette. And he's like, we are, as we are the same, we are different. And he like waves to the ceiling vaguely, a trail of like vapor from his e-cig. So you wouldn't rule out the possibility that this seemingly you that she did interacted with was in fact M.O. And he kind of like sits the e-cig down, like as if like standing it on its end. So it balances on the table, and then uh, he's like, she wouldn't care about a pilot. And he just picks up the cigarette again. Why would she care about this, Emmeline? What's so special about her? She's a psychic, and she's encountered various things. And he kind of turns to you next, and he's like, Everybody and their mother is a psychic. And he turns back to the... Baskerville. There's got to be some bleed through from Baskerville. Exactly. She interacted with those... things. What, th what things? He kind of draws from his e-cig. Uh, no, the plasmoids. I was told you about... Tell track. How much did we tell him? <laughs> we told him pretty much everything besides the... Her armored Alice. Our, our character, our character, mm -hmm. like, we told him everything beside Power Up, Armor Alice. Uh, I think we even did tell him about the creature at the end, didn't we? I, 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 I don't I know. Think he did knew you about Alice anyway, somehow? Mm. <laughs> um, Emma certainly seemed to. He definitely uh, implied that he did at the end of it as well. Um, um, but no, I don't think you told him about the cocoon. I don't know. Okay, I don't so know why we would have said something like that in, in character. We could. We could ha mm. uh, did we. Did we tell you about the... I uh, just guess the cat's in the bag now. I mean, he's not exactly a part of the Aspis, so... Um, I did tell you about the cocoon, right? Cocoon? And he kind of, like, tilts his head slightly, very coyly. Go on. And he, like, just leans forward and takes the bottle with, like, his other hand that hasn't got the cigarette in it. He's like, fill me in! And slowly starts <sighs> glugging the bottle. I'm just kind of start looking at it. He just hands it to like Nix. Nix. Hands it to Nix after him as well. Place it down on the table. <laughs> Nix. You are. Yes. Um. Probably the. Most adequate at describing things in a. Objective fashion. Generally accurate, yes. I like the idea that when Zig I goes to speak at that point and doesn't, and just kind of closes <laughs> his mouth a bit. I want to feel this one because I'm not quite sure where to start, and I think I got the best look, but... And I wasn't there to tell the exact story. I mean, Colin, you've had like a redux of the whole thing as well, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I don't necessarily want to go into Yeah, that. I figured you might not want to go... Also, that Bone Sage trip mind memory lane thingy. <laughs> Possibly killed all those people. 
How far along the line would you like me to start? <sighs> just well, tell them everything. Just tell them everything. At this point, does it matter? Uh, had we told him about the uh, crew members of Baskerville? We told him about that, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, then it was down to the crystal cocoon, the entity that hatched from inside of it. Uh, That's the one. I think he absorbed the crew members of Baskerville in right. the energy form they were. And kind of like you can see, like his eyes narrowing as like the kind of his eyes narrow as the glow, the blue light from the end of his e-cig kind of gets brighter as he's drawing in. And he's like, absorbed. How into the into the cocoon, as it was. Well, those that were still in their plasma form. Yes, they hadn't been popped or he drew them across the station towards himself. Themselves. Hmm. And that energy appeared to be sufficient for him to, for the, for the entity, to hatch. It's. He kind of wave, he, he waves his hand in front of you as if to stop. And he kind of like takes a cigarette out of his mouth. And he's like, hatch is the wrong word. Reconstitute. And he kind of like points at you. So you know what this thing is. And then he kind of like, he has that look. The look of, do I? He's like, I'm just listening to what you're, what you're telling me. If you have the uh, confidence to correct me without being there, you must have knowledge that we do not. Apparently I've been more places than I'm aware of, any points, like, over at Zora. Apparently so. But yes, this entity spoke some called the Oxygen. He's kind of like nodding and like taking a draw of his cigarette, like as if he's still fully attentive. Um, I think I give him a brief description of physical features. Mm -hmm, yeah. Witnessed. Um, in the absence of my memory, and um, and then he disappeared. Only to reappear more recently. How recently? I shake the goop. <laughs> recently. <laughs> he points at like the goop. As if that's him? No. <laughs> Obviously I like the the parallel of Alice asked the exact same. <laughs> That is what he did to the Drow Queen, we believe. Hmm. Oh. And he sits and he just like taps the flask with like his sig. And he's like, seems merciful. <laughs> there are worse fates. And then, like, you just catch him looking around the room as you say that, like, with his eyes only, and then just taking a draw of the cigarette without saying a thing. <laughs> so what was your deal with the Drow Queen, might I ask? No. You might not. Wasn't really at your choice. And he's, he's, like, the biggest grin appears on his face. He's like, Oh? And he kind of like yeah. leans like a Star Trek captain in his chair. It's like, and how is it not a choice whether I answer that question or not? I would lean forward like a captain. <laughs> Can't because it's my ship. <laughs> and I'll shove you at the fucking airlock if you don't. Intimidate, please. Yeah, you can I roll. don't do it often. Yeah, roll. yeah, roll. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why, why not? It's going to be pretty difficult, but yeah. Alright, let's see if I've got stats for this fucker. Where is my character sheet for this? 
Let me find it. I think Zig would slouch and try and make himself seem small. <laughs> er. <laughs> right. How am I countering this? Am I rolling Intimidate to counter it, or am I a... Uh... Intimidate. Yeah, like... What's my... How does one resist this? There must be an actual rule. Let's try and see if we can follow the rules for it. So Intimidate. Let's find it. Skills. I'm actually on the page. So Skills. it's essentially bullying. Right. Oh, so that's mean. Stop booking him. Find one oh. minute conversing with the creature. DC, blah, 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 blah. Mentally bullied is enough. It's our turn. 10 plus your opponent's <laughs> intimidate skill. Right, okay. That's interesting. So the DC of this check is equal to 10 plus your opponent's intimidate skill bonus, or 15 plus 1 hyphen 1 slash 2 times at the opponent's CR, whichever is greater. <laughs> Yep, that's what that's, that's what that's what it says. So let me just uh I'm, I'm, that would be an eighteen then. Copy and then paste. There there, there there's what the text says there. And then uh, divide. And then, and then, then add. Cause what, it's fifteen plus one and a half times this year. It's just why, it? it's the minus symbol is what I hate. The formatting is trash. It is absolute garbage. Um Right, okay. So let me work out what the, that number is then. So, CR times 1.5? Is that what it is? Uh, yeah, yeah. Plus 15. So that, that's, yeah. one, 15 plus 1.5 times CR. Christ. Right, well... Is that I think they both work out to 18. They don't. I don't know. Because keep in mind, it's not your intimidate skill we're adding ten to. I'm just gonna I'm gonna put the maths in here for you, right? So the DC of this check, right? Because we've got your roll, right? Your roll is a twenty three. Oh right, 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 right. Which is good, right? DC technically. Right, right. So the DC on this test is either with the first method, let me just put in the numbers. So the first method is his intimidate skill plus ten. Right? That makes sense, as bonus, <coughs> which is... I'm assuming he's a fucking charisma primary, yep. <laughs> or if you do the maths the other way... I mean, either way, it's a fail, so... Yeah. By a good chunk. Now everybody can do the reverse maths if you want, to try and work out what yeah, CR is. Yeah. 15. Yeah. Yep. Easy. Easy. There's we're, we can we're take equal him. to like CR twenty, right? If we put us all together. We just form a megazord, we'll be fine. <laughs> but I don't think I coloured the ship that way. Uh, <laughs> 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 that is the megazord. So based on both methods, yeah, you feel. So tell me how it doesn't work, because I don't want to tell you why you'd like back down from this. I want you to tell me why you back down from this. Because, like, is it an impression you get from him? Is it a slight grin that seems to disappear into that black smoke with the rainbowy edges to it? Like, you tell me what you describe the scene for me as Zora. Why do you back down? Because a 36 or 37 and a half is a far cry from the 23 year old. I just kind of sit back and I say, although, whatever the hell you are, I'm not even too sure if the void of space would even kill you. And then, like, as you say that to him, he kind of like smirks and kind of looks over, like, "Yeah, me neither these days." Kind of just like sits back in the chair. And he's like measuring dicks aside. He turns round to the group in general. He's like, "I didn't plague your friend." He's pointing back at you, Zora. That's not me. Whatever that. Can I do a is. cheeky uh, sense motive in that? Sure. I actually, out of character, I do believe him, but I don't know entirely. You want to mechanically also believe him, though. <laughs> I, I roll a fucking fifteen, so I don't have a fucking clue anyway. Um, no, not in a fifteen. You don't. You do think he's being genuine, though, with a fifteen. Like you have no reason to disbelieve him. Because I mean. 
I I think I think I've always had a kind of hard time reading him anyway. Mm. So yeah, because it's almost like I'm so honest. Maybe that's the lie, right? In fact, I think like would probably voice that. Say, look, for what it's worth, Cap, I'm inclined to trust him in this. Although I have to put my hand up and say I've always struggled to get a read on the guy. I just kind of left my head acknowledging the. Uh, I don't know if that's a bird, but it is. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> I'm inclined to trust him. Oh. There's more like, did. Just like a question and oh. Yeah. He, he did help me out in the. wherever we were. <laughs> and like. Trace an eyebrow. Yeah, and like he. Um, like. Edgar like points as if see like that type of reaction like look see he trusts me the little one but he doesn't say any of that he just like points excitedly as if look see <laughs> until it's his head then why does half of Absalom want you well your head in a pipe quite frankly and he like he smirks and kind of like chuckles and like half coughs up like the vapour that he's been trying to inhale while laughing at that he's like other than the fact that you're a part of Aspis like I wouldn't even say half. I'd probably say three quarters. Like, and shrugs it off. I'd probably chuckle. So you're probably right. <laughs> and he kind of just like, almost seems quite self-satisfied with thinking about that. Like he's a he's a very hated man type thing. Um, but then, Aspis can sort of aren't really loved. You know, <laughs> it's not really a good company. The they profit off war, so yeah. And think how many people have probably had to like seek refuge in somewhere like Absalom because their homes are trashed. Do you know what I mean? Or they've ended up in the bowels of Absalom Station just to like live in slums because they have nothing. Do you know what I mean? They've probably jumped on transports and been ditched in places. So yeah. But yeah, like it's like all of this hostility aside. Something's messed with your friend's head, and it seemed to need to use me to buy her trust. Why would she trust me? She knows you, but not enough to be suspicious. This isn't Emma O's style. I don't think it's her. She doesn't... Like, why would she care? No offence to your friend, of course. Waves at hate to speak ill of the dead. And he kind of like looks at Lyco briefly and back at Zora. Mm. <laughs> I like how you just go, look, you just both sit and go, hmm. At the end of the day, she did walk off with MO though. Uh, at the end of the day, I don't think your friend is taking many breaths anymore. I would crack my teeth. Why would why would Mo pretend to have use of her and then simply kill her? Why wouldn't she just kill her outright, or ignore her if she doesn't care? Your entity. She does have his dead to rights. And he waves like your your entity on Baskerville Research Station. If it is indeed as powerful, and he kind of waves at the goo, as you say it is. If that has affected your friend, perhaps it's left trace of itself within your pilot. That's of course going to be of interest to my former employer, but that doesn't mean that your friend has to survive that process. Shit. <laughs> it just occurred to me, we're pretty confident this thing was a powerful psychic entity, right? And it spoke. So it's presumably sentient. <sighs> you were the one who sent us the Baskerville. So, whether it got it from there, it could probably have very easily found out about you 
and haven't done so, then it's got a lure. It knows that you are someone with connections to all sorts of shady doings and what have you, and it, it also knows that we know only so much about you. Enough, perhaps, to feel safe, enough to know that you are someone that we could go to if we had a problem that uh, maybe <laughs> required a bit of discretion, but certainly not someone we knew deeply enough to know that it wasn't really you. I had been thinking Emma would use you as a lure because it's obvious, right? She planned to get rid of you. She would just pretend she hadn't. We'd think nothing was amiss. But if it was an MO, why use your image? Because you were the first thing that came to mind. Because you were the reason we were there. I think it might be it. He leans in. He's like, I can't speak to the motives of this creature that you've experienced on Baskerville, but Emma O does not need to pretend to any of you. Use her but dust to her. Yeah. And Kyle leans back in the chair after that. And he's like, however, if indeed this thing is posing as me to your pilot, it would know everything she knew if it was indeed a psychic. Yeah. And everything all of you who were exposed to it would know. Especially if it's capable of reducing someone as powerful as the Drag Queen. Replaceable as she might be, she still had power. The other thing that strikes me as perhaps significant is Emmeline Daly was a capable psychic herself, not on anything like the level of this creature, just what I've seen it do so far has been beyond anything I've experienced, but she'd had access to a number of minds. That that information, well, it could be all weaponized now against us, if need be, or against whoever intends to act against. How long did you know Emily? I think this is the first time he's actually used her name as well. A few years. It's a good question, I can't remember how long it was before. But yeah, like Zora would remember, right? So a character, I think I I resolved that I met all of you through working in the crew. Mm -hmm. So I would say. I'm well, just trying to remember. I think you met Nick before that. I think. I well, think. I think Nick yeah. knew of me at least, mm -hmm. but I don't know if we actually met. I don't know if you'd remember him if he had just been a. Yeah, just some specialist in projects. So, Zora would know anyway. How long Zora's known? Emlyn, which is probably the most out of everybody. Um, yeah, and then I'm just trying to remember how long. It's okay. Like you can. Back story, the um, yeah, five the, years, wasn't it? Oh, it was like five years. I'm pretty sure four or five years. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, and then Edgar's like, "How much do you know about latent psychic energy?" Uh, shrug. <laughs> I'm starting to come to terms with it. <laughs> Look at Zig. <laughs> I like that small shuffle away from Zig as you look at him, or <laughs> no? Just just look at him, see if he has any comment, because he seems like he would be the most, you know, inclined to things not of the physical. Um, yeah, because Zig's kept quite quiet through most of this. Yeah, um, Zig would shrug because um, all his sort of mystical experience is based on feels and. Um, these weird words, um, latent, psychic, and nonsense, nonsense, um, just doesn't actually mean anything to him. He experiences everything through the feeling of like emotion, the warmth of the sun, and that was literally grand, granted to me through well, well, crazy sun deities, if they think it's worthy. <laughs> pretty much. Yep. <laughs> like, pretty much. <laughs> 
So yeah, like, and I, I can just stab people basically and shoot them. So that's, that's yeah, like Lyco looks at his wrists. Yeah, I just kind of stab people. Yeah, and don't die so good. <laughs> um, yeah, so like after like that that question kind of fills the room a bit. He's like he takes a draw, a very slow, deliberate draw. It's like the one of those annoying draws where it's like, get to the fucking point, Edgar. And then he's like, at this point he goes to speak. But then he closes his lips, and everybody hears it in their head. Like, Lyco, you have... You know, like when like the front door knocks and someone's trying to make yeah. psychic connection, but the door gets smashed open anyway. So, yeah. You hear the the pressure in your head, everyone. Um, whether comfortable or otherwise, it's almost like someone comes on a mic on your headset that you didn't actually expect you were still wearing. And uh, the voice echoes and says like, I'm a powerful enough telepath to make contact over a fair distance with little effort. And I am fully versed in this. And he kind of like... You get the impression he relaxes his own like kind of muscles in his shoulders and whatnot. And within that you get a small impression of the last couple of days that he's experienced. Which is agony, pain, fear... You get a, like this really uncomfortable, as if you've just had like a like a flashback to something awful. Um, but you know it's not you. You know it's Edgar that just had that experience recently. And then, like the room, almost like that kind of blood rush to your head, blackout thing. He's all kind of uh, are back in the room, and he just sits there and he's like, spending enough time with a psychic will affect you all greater than you's probably even were aware of. You've probably found yourselves in sync with your pilot more than you felt maybe experience alone would have merited. Psychics leak. It's not their own fault, it's just what happens. Not everyone's as well trained as some of the more adept amongst us. Again, it takes another slow draw. Because he knows he's kind of talking at people that have just been shook, right? Because everyone's mm. just had this horrible experience of, you know, I've just been tortured or whatever. Um, and then he's, uh, he's like, if this creature has made contact with uh, your pilot, it probably knows way more about you than you even realise. It's probably connected still, if it is indeed a powerful psychic. It's probably why it found, and it points to the the flask o ooze. It's like, probably why it, probably how it found you. He just sits back and takes a draw as if pondering that. How is everyone? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yeah, concerned. Concerned. But, Better concerned. it all makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting then that it let us go. Suggests it has some sort of use for us. Or that you don't have anything to stop it. He kinda like smirks his aura. <sighs> I don't know if many people do. I mean seems to me like Nobody even knows what the hell it is, other than our supreme friend. Hmm. Yeah, and he kind of like sets his cigarette down again, as if kind of like playing with it and like spins it in circles and stuff on the table. You're a supreme friend. Kind of waves vaguely at the table, as if waiting on an explanation. A fellow prisoner of the drow. Hmm. But why? Zink? Mm. Twiddles his thumbs. <laughs> Perhaps he's connection to whatever the hell the Void Dragon is. You did steal that for the draw, right? I'm not someone who is particularly knowledgeable about mystical shit but uh, 
there's an obvious para parallel, right? Like there's the the two opposing forces of light and darkness, void, sun. Points I would at, not. And then he points at Zig. He's like life. Points at you, like oh, death. You could draw comparisons anywhere. Yeah, I guess. So, not to be that guy with that question. What's the plan when we get to Epsilon? Raises an eyebrow. <laughs> <sighs> Try and figure out something to do with us. Point towards the ooze. He kind of like waves his hand out. He's like, I don't know. You can put the goo in the refrigerator for all I care. And he starts ta he taps his own chest. He's like, me. I don't think we've got a refrigerator big enough. <laughs> he smirks. Yeah. <laughs> he's like he smirks and kind of does that thing where he just closes his eyes and he's got a smile on his face, and then he just doesn't respond, but almost like he's dismissed several things he wants to say, <laughs> and then he's like, "I believe you are embroiled with my former employee employer, and I have delivered bad news about your former pilot, and we seem to be at that point where if I go to Absalom Station." He waves vaguely. Severance is the least of my worries. So you want to go elsewhere? No, I want to kill that bitch. Well, I don't know her and I don't oh. particularly care what happens to her, but it feels like if you could have done that, you would have, so... Being well. caught off guard. And being pissed off for two different sides of a coin. He takes a draw of the, the cigarette again. I think for the first time in my life, I may agree with Mr. Wesland. Because quite frankly, if, he's done any, if she's done anything to Emily, I'll probably kill her myself. If that's even possible. He's like, most things die. Like was the exception. No. No, everything dies. Some things just take longer. I can't look around the room. He's like, wow, you are a bleak bunch of fuckers. My life was war. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of like smirks once and kind of like is. No, that kind of almost fake kind of, huh. Yeah. Like acknowledging the fact that you're laughing. He's like, one of my lives was war. And he kind of just leaves that comment hanging. Oh, there we have something in common. Yeah, I guess oh. a few of us do. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> the truths are coming out. <laughs> if we're going to try and, and and assist you in this, and it sounds like the captain is uh, inclined to do so. You still need to follow me, but I need to find him a hot devil. I think the thing about you being captain is we kind of do, but... And I think I the fact that... Point, you, it's, I think it's plain to see that I don't run that kind of shit. No anymore. Edgar stands up at that point, and he's like... Kind of like with his hand on the back of the chair. He's like... I'm gonna go kill my former boss. Um... You can help. Or... I guess... Get the fuck out of Dodge. I don't really care which you do. But I don't really have any interest in a reducing collateral damage. So, yeah. You're. A c and he's like, hmm. Safety isn't guaranteed for your friend if she is indeed still alive. What uh, about Absalom? And he kind of like smirks like, what about Absalom? A lot of people, some might say the center of the galaxy. Okay, that's smart. Yeah, this galaxy. 
that would stagger at that, to be honest. Mm. Yeah, it's like you just decide if you want to help, because if you are on point to sweep in before the rocks fall. Perhaps your friend's recoverable. Otherwise, I'm just gonna go kill him all. Are you then taking our place at Aspis? It would be rude to leave the seat empty. He just takes a draw with a cigarette. And he's like, well, this has been fun. He kind of leans into his jacket pocket, pulls out like his kind of e cig case, and just sits it down. Like open, uh, with the other e cig sitting in it, he just sits it on the table. He's like, "Enjoy," and he just walks out of the room and goes back to his room that he's been assigned. We got that weird vapor trail just left behind, lingering in the air. So, <laughs> well. Ain't me just the smartest budge. Yeah. Yeah, we did good. It's a good stand up. I felt I feel I feel like Zara Paul would as well. Probably just kinda of wave everybody off. He's probably feeling pretty terrible right now. <laughs> mm. Yeah, right. <laughs> so Probably just kind of start up, like kind of get a like one hand back wave, like we're done. Mm. Leave. <laughs> captain, where's everything go? Or do you just have a conversation minus the captain now? Uh, I'm gonna. Well, actually, I'm probably just gonna sit in the room and ponder <laughs> for a bit. Just I'm stare just stand deeply there for a bit, but yeah, that's no, fine. I like the idea that maybe you both just stay in the room, just separately, almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that works. Although, this being there might. I think I'd it's hand like... um, Michael his scarf. Oh, <laughs> thanks. What should we do? It's a good sigh and kind of sit back down. Hmm. I feel like I have to help Mr. Wesland. I. I want to protect my friend if I can. Uh. Feels strange calling her that, but. I guess the length of time I've known you guys, it's the most apt description. Uh, I want to protect Absalom. I don't think. I don't think there is a good guy in this fight. I don't think there's a right side to choose. And I think whoever we side with, the other one's gonna know we've sided against them before we even realize it. I think we don't have any good options. Sometimes the right choice is to make the wrong choice. And then he would leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's prophetic words. Mm. It's learning. <laughs> <laughs> I think, see before you get past that, right? So, go back out of your room, go back down, one. Edgar motions at you to come in to the room. Um, I was like, we might as well go in, yeah. And obviously, he takes off his uh, wizard robe, puts his hat aside, moves the duvet away. No, he doesn't. And then, <laughs> once you're in the room, like the door closes as he kind of waves his hand vaguely at it and he's like kind of like gestures to like a seat in the corner I 
as if take the seat. It's in it. Yep. Sorry. It's okay. I pick it up and I take it to my room. Ah, good. <laughs> good, it was bugging me. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so he motions to the seat for you to sit down, and he kind of just like puts his back up against like the wall and does that leaning smoking thing. And uh, mm -hmm. he's like, How are you? I think he kind of looks at Edgar, kind of confused, like not confused as it's not a difficult question, but confused as to just, he's not 100% sure how to answer that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think he just says, tired. And he's like, hmm. And he kind of looks at you, kind of like, really really deeply like if this room was kind of poorly lit it would just be whatever light source is in the room shining off his eyes mm. and he's like you smell the same <laughs> right, we kind of we'll probably just get like that confused look at, yeah <laughs> like the, the weird look at Zig and then uh, he's like I had to take the long way round how did you get here uh, I'd like put like my hand out and like motion for him to like get up, like take my hand. It raises an eyebrow, an ocular ridge, if you will, and he uh, puts the cigarette in his mouth, shrugs his shoulders, leans in with his hand. And a mind link. What you said to them? <laughs> um, basically everything from the moment. Um. We separated it up, but I went through the le le door portal thingy, mm -hmm. Madudad. Okay. Um, yeah. Basically, everything from there up until obviously meeting again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Make a will save. Badoop. Well, that's really good, really good boys. So, um, yeah, you you're pulled in mentally with this link, as if you're kind of like witnessing everything, right? So you're witnessing everything you're sending okay. to him, and you can see him standing, kind of watching it, mm -hmm. like so. You're kind of side by side. Probably still holding hands, and that kind of very kind of let's watch the world burn together kind of viewpoint, as uh -huh. everything kind of zooms past, and then when you get to the part where you start to like flicker in and out, it seems to be causing both of you pain, like I mean both of you currently, like as if this is not normal, not right, as if it's rejecting the fact that you are being pulled through this memory again. Mm -hmm. Almost as if this shouldn't be, this doesn't match, this is toward data. Um, and you are almost like violently pushed back out of the mind link. Um, but obviously you get pushed back, but Edgar's holding on to you. So like, he just kind of grips your hand a bit tighter. And then you kind of stay put. Very Guardians of the Galaxy finale-esque, you know? Um, uh -huh. And then you just get to witness the whole thing. And then the kind of the light fades, and then obviously we do that kind of thing where it darkens and the the room flickers brighter. The user both standing and his user holding hands. And he's like, "Fuck!" And that's like where we cut on you two in the room with Edgar just saying, "Fuck." <laughs> <laughs> um, what's like we're doing alone in a canteen? He is, well, to an outside observer, he'd probably just have like assumed the same pose for quite a while now, like mid-tapping hand and table, mm. and just staring straight into space, and uh, he would make a determination to, now, do I have any means to contact Sindel? Well, I mean, how would you like to try? Do, do I have a, a literal technological contact? Can I phone him? 
Yeah, but you'd probably have to wait till you're out of like drive space, right? Yeah. But you could prime a message. So it just auto sends as soon as you're out of drive space. No. <laughs> and I don't know if I can, if Cindy would have the capacity to contact me. <laughs> Imagine the phone, but... like their their mobile phone goes. <laughs> God, yeah. Um, although certainly he has he has shown the capacity for mental contact. And you have a mental connection. Okay, so I think, yeah, I think I think that'd be the case. Ico would possibly try and sort of awkwardly reach out mentally, or at least... <sighs> like, you know how he has a sort of sense of something probing to get in? Mm -hmm. He would try and be receptive to that, <laughs> to find like, if the link is there to be established, as it were. Yeah, okay. Um... So you're doing this, just doing it in the canteen, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so let's, you describe what Lyco would do, like, mentally or physically. You describe that to me and I'll see what we're rolling. Um, so is it like a kind I of, you know, so. my mind to your mind, Cindy, I'll hear my thoughts, kind of, you know, is it an attempt at, like, pushing telepathy, or? Frozen, but, you know, he wouldn't really know what it meant to push out. Mm. Or is it more like a relaxing your natural guard and trying yes. to like pull him in almost? Yeah, it would be sort of like, I I know you're sort of always lurking there. Mm. You know, it, it, it's a sort of I I know you're there. You can you can come in for a bit. Um, yeah. As it were. Yeah, we'll save. We'll save. Right. One sec. Did you save? Will. Yeah, that's enough. In the sense that you didn't want a high number for this. Yeah. Uh, so, you close your eyes, you do that thing where you're staring out of space and you think, oh, okay, Sindile, let's go for it. Yeah. And then, um, you close your eyes, you start doing that thing where you almost like, like you relax your shoulders, but you try and do it with your brain. <laughs> yeah. And then, I see what you mean. Yeah. And you open your eyes. <laughs> it's facing the wall. <laughs> um, I so I suppose I would say inside my head, you know, Cindy. Yes. It kind of like awkwardly, like chicken leg turns itself around, as if crammed in this room. It's a big. It's a big thing. One of its legs is like yeah. obviously up on the table. The other one's like hopping to turn it round. We've had contact again with. So I'll try to speak in character, even when I'm speaking mentally. Sorry, uh, we we've had contact again with this entity, Baskerville. It kind of like just puts its hands out to the side. As if, like, reaching for something. Either way. Like, left and right. And it just hasn't really, like, looked directly at you yet. And it just starts to, like, clutch at the air. Uh, it destroyed the Drow Queen. And... And, like, as you say that, it then kind of, like, turns to you. Goes, Queens, come and go. Yeah, it did it quite handily, but there is another concern. Absalom Station may be about to become the uh, first front in a civil war within the Aspis. Oh. And it kind of like freezes midair. Almost like, you know, the streaming quality has uh, maybe dropped out. And then it kind of like jankily like, tilts to the side. As if it's lost its train of thought. And then it says... Absalom has... Other problems now. 
and he kind of waves a hand at you, like almost like as if point, like as if gesturing you with an open palm. But you know, Cinderella isn't saying you're its other problem. Yeah. <laughs> well, what, what, what other problems might they be? And then the big smile appears, like ear to ear. Because you will see when I see. Make a will save. Okay. Cool. You can Do feel. I want to roll high in so that one? Sorry. This is now you, you get the choice at this point. So, Cindael is about to pull away. You can attempt to hold, or you can let them go. Um, can I add one to that roll for Phantom Basal Ganglia? Would that count? Sure. Uh, yeah, I'll try and hold on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what? Don't ask. And then uh, I'm even asking. <laughs> 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 remember, remember Nas McEcklick? Do you remember all those like forewarnings you all got as a party? This green no area way, is MISC. <laughs> Lyco is MISC medical data. <laughs> You're weird, man. And then um, Cindael, like, turns around as if, why, where am I? As if it's still there and it didn't expect to be. When it, like, it, like, leans and, like, drags its, like, kind of torso across the, the table, so its legs are just kind of, like, being dragged along the table as it's kind of chicken legs are leaning over you and it kind of just waits and hangs there looking at you as if I'm trying you've still to got more to ask obviously I'm trying to uh, make this a fruitful exchange for both of us fruit is high in fiber which neither of us need I mean to say productive then I assume. say productive. It is more fruitful. Uh, <laughs> sure. The green glow the from the eyes, like kind of glitter a little. The situation we've been discussing, I have no doubt, has some potential relevance to the uh, Eoxian delegation. On Absalom. Absalom is burning. Christ. No, not oh Christ. <laughs> no, not oh Christ. Wrong universe. Um, oh something. Oh expletive. Mm. I'm assuming you're that you're being literal. It just like looks up as if it's thinking about that, but then you never get an answer. And it keeps like looking to the side as if checking stuff, but you don't know, it's just it being weird and twitchy. Why is it burning? And it kind of looks back at you. You are curious today. Yes, I am. Yes, you are. And then it says, uh, Absalom is burning. Are you coming back? It kind of like clasps We're its hand. <laughs> yes. That is a bad idea. It kind of nods. And like all of its feathers kind of like ruffle. Um. I don't think we have much choice at this point. It looks confused. Wesland. Lyco. Edgar Wesland. He's on board this ship and he intends to go to the Aspis Consortium. The building, physically at least, is situated in Absalom. I don't think he's going to let us change course. Do you want me to kill him? I'm far too ambivalent about him for that, but 
let's not rule out the possibility it will come to this. It kind of just gives the equivalent of whatever kind of shrug it can do, where its body kind of just twitches, I guess, on its kind of chicken leg frame. Meanwhile, I appreciate the information. Is there anything I can do? Do you wish to burn? Not especially. Do not come to Absalom Station. <sighs> Thank you, Sindhya. Thank you, Sindhya. That leaves. <laughs> Damn. And obviously it does that thing where it looks around a bit and then walks off to the side dragging itself across the table and then fades away. Yeah. So I think we fade out on Lyco. What's... Zora doing at this point? Because you stormed off to your like room, right? Yeah. Or did you go so elsewhere? Zora. No, I went to my room. I went to my room. Um, probably went to my room originally to just like start throwing shit about and get all angry and stuff. Uh, but I probably decided just to like kind of. Maybe it does that Darth Vader they? rumble though. Like obviously, like if you're getting angry, maybe the the bass kicks in. And it'll do the Darth Vader force use rumble because <laughs> of your gravity power, and then you obviously calm your mind. Well, I'll probably I to just sit there and do some, funnily enough, some very Jedi thing, and actually just some good old fashioned like meditation stuff. You know? Ah, it's crash the ship! I see. actually do that. Like, yeah, like I what's don't do it much. what's <laughs> like what's the dream outcome for your meditation? To be honest, with you, I, you just reflecting right wondering if he's ever made the right choice <laughs> well why don't we get a rule right why don't you give us some kind of mysticism rule for this and we'll give it a bit of unless you've got a better like option but I feel like that's what um, we did the last time when you tried to like focus no 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 I'll probably just do the mysticism thing again pro um I'll do the clicky click uh, I'm gonna type it in then actually yeah um, click away like I'm, I'm keeping up. Okay. Yeah, bump. It's like not good. Mysticism isn't, isn't even bad. That's just unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, so like, tell us like, what's what's on your mind? Why can't you focus? Um, probably because like, he's well. Okay, man, you're still not a hundred percent physically either. I'm not hundred percent physical, and I've just been told that pretty much everything I thought was was, well. A thing isn't actually a thing, so, mm -hmm. so it's probably very confuzzled. <laughs> Can't yeah. quite focus. Mm. So, what do you do for the rest of day two? Uh, probably a mixture of sleep and meditate and just reflect. Mm -hmm. Reflection day. Yeah, kind of like a, oh god, what have I actually done? What am I meant to be doing? Like, who do I trust? Yeah, that makes sense. Exactly. Like, or do you, like, go anywhere else beyond the cantina, or do you go back to your room and just chill go out? Go back or? to my room. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, what's what you head back there? Um, what about you, Nix? In the cargo bay? Um, probably walk in and see what Alice is doing. Alice is uh, dancing when you walk in. Is there music playing? No. Alice. She falls over. <laughs> and looks really embarrassed oh. and goes, I was looking for this! And pulls up one of the floor panels off the floor. Yes, we have them in every room. Luckily I found this one. The one I was looking for. Are you planning to do anything with it? Do you want it? Shoulder. Can you put it back on the floor, please? <laughs> <laughs> and she kind of like... Moves her legs out of the way and then, like, kind of, like, almost she's kneeling down, puts it back on, and then just kind of, like, smooths it out. But you can see that she's kind of mashed the metal. She's like, it, it'll do. And she stands up. Did you need me for something? She kind of smiles and, like, her glow gets a bit brighter. Maybe. 
Do you mind the hologram goes all the way over her now, like she was uh, previously? Before you were actually just out of character, did we know that she was involved in teleport constant? No. <laughs> no, okay. Yeah. See if you no. if you want to make some kind of charisma check, you can see if you've throughout the year, you can see if that ever came up. Yep. Can I roll? I think. Um yeah, all of my Christmas checks are the same. So, diplomacy or something then? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just. A 10. Right, let me see what she can do. Right, I'll just, I'll just roll the same, right? And we'll see if her way of replying would have been obvious. Right, is this? That's not a character sheet. Uh, this one, that's also not a character sheet. Where is There we go. There's our character sheet. Right, so, skills. Uh, am I rolling diplomacy or bluff? Probably bluff, right? I'd assume bluff, yeah. <laughs> Shoot all the six. <laughs> nice. <That> seems <laughs> appropriate. Just brilliant, right? Absolutely brilliant. Um, An Android try to figure something. It's the Android trying to figure each other out and goes, yes, I would have said it that way too. <laughs> 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 yeah, so like over the year, it's probably these roles probably dictate it's near the end of that year, let's face it. Um, yeah. It's probably been a lot of back and forth, and it's probably been an awkward conversation and a maintenance hatch somewhere, where like, these are both working on something mundane, and then she goes so by the way so yeah, she reveals that um, obviously under like control of SK she moved the ship. Mm -hmm. So it's revealed that like, that was the reason. Obviously if you're going to probe for it, let's say um, Establish that now. Well, what would you have asked her on top of that? I'd probably ask how it was done. Is that S Kate herself? And then, like Alice, like, there is a thing, it was a shiny thing, it was kind of round but with flat bits on it, and then I pushed the flat bits in a certain order, and then the thing went really, really bright, and Zig would have loved it, and then it moved us. Yep. But I don't really remember that. Did it have to be applied to the spaceship itself? And she kind of like screws up her face. So, I'm so there's a round thing, and I pushed bits of it that were flat. And she kind of like nods to herself. And she's like, but I think it was SK that was doing most of it. Okay. I think, you know, she probably just, she'd probably call her Isabel by this point, because mm -hmm. Alice is weird and really socially not right, so she's like, it's probably the SK Isabel. Yeah. I think, maybe I want it to be her that did it, but, and she kind of like, obviously, it's one of these awkward, these are both in a random fucking Jeffrey's tube somewhere. Um conversation. But the gist of it is, there was a device, she activated the device, she doesn't really know how the thing worked, um, but it seemed to envelop the ship, and mm. it moved, and she's like, I could probably draw it, but I couldn't tell you how it worked. Well that would be useful. Also I've checked the whole ship and I can't find it. Yeah, so I think i probably get her to draw it, although once, I think once Nick Spire has gathered that she doesn't have any more information. Yeah, I think the last time I described it. Use in, uh, yeah, it looks something like a D20, do you know what I mean, or like a, a D12, yeah. do you know what I mean, it's some kind of multi-faceted... Uh, Polyhedral. Yeah, um, and it's like, it's got symbols, but she's wrote the word symbol on each face, because <laughs> she doesn't know what was on it, she just knows yep. there was a symbol on it. And she's like, well, I touched like this one and this one and this one, and then this one. But obviously it's useless because it just says symbol. <laughs> so she kind of like renders this in a 3D hologram. Cool. So yeah, I think the X5 probably catalogs that at the time. Mm -hmm. His bank of interesting information that he needs a lot more information to actually make it useful. 
Yeah, so she um, obviously sends that off to you. Um, and then we can skip all the way back to now, if you want. Yep. So yeah, she's she's pushed in this floor panel again. <laughs> uh, don't worry, that I can fix that. It would be. I feel like we're getting to a time that would be really useful to have that emergency escape button. And she kind of like slowly nods. She goes. I don't understand. I th think we might be about to start a war, Alice. Start a war? She kind of like, looks a bit confused. We may be on a collision path. No, we're not. I checked. I plotted the route myself. Uh, metaphorical Alice. Do you remember we spoke about that? No, no. Real Alice. And she taps herself. <laughs> we... It looks like we're heading to Absalom. That's where um, I'm taking this. She, like, nods. Yes, but we're not probably not going under... The pretense that we once had. Probably going to be involved in the assassination of the head of Asp. Okay. And we want them dead? She's like nodding as if she totally follows. Edgar wants them dead. And we like Edgar. She no. Like she like she has like her thumb up, like at her hip, and she slowly like turns her hand so it's got the thumb down. So we don't like Edgar. We don't know what Edgar is, or what game he's playing. We don't know what game Emma is playing. Should we or be SK. playing the same game? <laughs> We've. Uh, she like walks forward, see so, like as you like hesitate, she walks forward and kinda like just puts her hand on your like kinda chest as if to like stop you. And then she's like All games have rules. Even if you don't know what the rules are. We shouldn't play this game. Not until we know the rules. Yes, but I feel we are pawns being used in this game. But even a pawn knows how it can move. I guess I'm just a bit fed up of being a pawn. Then get to the other side of the board. That, that seems like it might be a bloody part. And she kind of like yeah. shrugs and she's like, What can I say? I don't have blood. <laughs> No. <sighs> I don't know. A priest once told me violence is the last refuge of the incompetent. How competent was the priest? Well, he's dead now. I think that's so. ironic. <laughs> <laughs> or unfortunate. One of the two. Anyway, yes. And she kind of like just <laughs> slowly nods, as if like in deep thought. No, I don't know how to build that teleportation device. You showed me. <laughs> we might be able to build a bomb. Bombs are easy. She kind of like nods. You just need to make things go really far away from each other really fast. Let's build one of those. That's a start. Okay. okay might be. <laughs> <laughs> then, like, I think we maybe fade out of you guys on that one. Yeah. <laughs> so you spend the rest of your um, day two, I guess, working on a bomb together. Yep. Cool. Mm -hmm. Give me an engineering roll. Ooh. Mm. 
18. Let's see what she's got. It's a very poor roll. Uh, she got 27. Okay. So. That's why we asked for help. Let's have a. It's actually why I really like D&D 5e. Sorry, Starfinder. Um, but I just <laughs> like the advantage system <laughs> is so good. Um, but that's the equivalent of just both people rolling anyway, so. Uh, I suppose unless this comes under the take 10 or take 20 time limits. Yeah. So, it probably does, because let's face it, like, there's no time limit as such. Dot, dot, dot. There is. But, uh, engineering, making a bomb. Let me just write it down. Uh, we'll come back to that. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know probably what it is, though, right? Not to go too off topic right at this very point in time. In fact, no, I won't. We'll be fine. I'll be fine. Um, I'll come back to that in the post game. So, um, I think with that, we'll fade out on day two, right? We'll fade out on mm -hmm. day two. Everybody can do their day two healing if they want. Because um, obviously, people probably want to get more health. I get that feeling. <laughs> yeah, you want day yeah. two healing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, if everybody does that just now, and then, did they do want to do anything critical? in like the first half of day three that you just want to have checkpointed in the recording. Ooh. Cause that's something you just want to do before obviously a certain pre warned visitor. That's a good question. Mm. Uh Getting actually the bag, <laughs> I'm gonna go for a no cool. controversially. It's like, I'm going to put you back in your own room just because I don't know. Oh, how, thank you. Just a bit, bit weird if you just stayed with Edgar the whole time. You can if uh, you want, but like, it's still a bit weird. No, 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 it's fine, it's fine. Uh, I don't know, I feel like I'd want to talk to the Radiant Supreme, but I don't know if I actually would. <laughs> that makes sense, that feels yeah. very zig. If you don't, I will, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to go do that now then? Let's. Right, I'll yeah. move myself. Well, do you want to catch him somewhere? Because he might wander the ship if you wanted to catch him somewhere else. No, I'd approach him where he was most comfortable, which would be the room that's sort of his at the moment. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll even chap before I go in. Yeah, and I think um, after like a good maybe minute, the door opens. And uh, this wave of heat, like hits you like wet heat, yeah. um, and then uh, he's he like kind of like almost as if collapsing on you, like grabs you by the shoulders and like his little fingerly wrap around you, and he's like, "I couldn't find the button." Yep. I see. May I come in? And he kind of like just like puts himself under his own like weight again, and then, like kind of like takes one hand off you and the other hand's still on your shoulder and he kind of like just like tugs at you. Okay. So you head in. Right. Um, this is like someone has just left their shower running constantly by the way. Yeah. Like the place, it's, it's just a hot, yeah. <laughs> it's tropical rainforest season in here. There's just like a, like a bunch of wet towels on the floor. Radiant Supreme. Mr. And he kind of waves his hands yeah. fingerly at you. I don't think we've been properly introduced. Uh, I am like a Quint. I hold my hand out, you know. He looks at your hand and he goes, Of course you are. And he like, puts his hand in it. They all can like slowly curl around you. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> oh, that's creepy. Just, uh, just um, sort of gently shake. <laughs> Would Zig right. be able to hear any of the... Roll perception. In the other room or... Okay, okay. Uh. Here. Uh. Perception. Badoop! Yeah. Cool. Okay. I, would, I would like to hear. You're real... In fact, can I roll perception as well to see if I notice that he's listening in? <laughs> well, it's more a case of Zig's door's probably open. 
and right, like while right. he didn't while he didn't necessarily pay attention to who walked past, I think when you like knocked on the door and was like, okay. "Can I come in?" Okay. I think he's probably heard that. Um. And I will continue. So if the door closed, obviously though, so Zig, like, you'll need to do more if you wanted like. Get I think yeah. If I if I'd heard him like. He's been welcomed in by the Radiant Supreme. Like you heard them talking. Welcomed in. I'd have heard the voices. I'd be like actively trying to. Um kind of get a gauge on what's happening in the room. Yeah, I feel like there needs to be some kind of... Hmm. What would it be? What type of check? What skills have we got here that would almost like skill duggery is the skill I'm looking for, but I ain't in this system. So, do you know what I mean? Like the kind of eavesdropping? Because I know it's yeah. per like uh -huh. perception just feels too clean. There needs to be yeah. a getting to a position to know how to eavesdrop. You got stealthing then. Yeah, maybe it is stealth because Zig does know his way around the ship, so yeah, yeah, to like hide, hide in a, hide in a little vent somewhere. Yeah, roll, roll stealth then, and we'll I'll add a Zig knowing the ship bonus, and we'll we'll see how well you do. Okay, okay. Um, because I don't have good stealth. Sneaking. <laughs> Sneaking. Snacking. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, considering that's like a twenty-five, yeah, it's all right. Um, it just gave you like an extra ten for how long you'd have spent crawling around the ship, quite frankly. Since we did establish that right at the start. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I'd say that you could probably comfortably listen in if you like pull open a vent, crawl halfway into it, probably somewhere between the floors. You know. Mm-hmm. Probably yeah. the pulsing of an yeah. engine kind of line, yeah. So yeah, back to life. Like it in there too, because it's quite warm. Yeah, it's probably really cozy, and it's also probably even more warm because of the amount of fucking heat going to the radiant supreme room to keep the water hot. So yeah, back in the the room with the radiant supreme, you've done your intro. You've had the horrible fingerly handshake. I uh, I hope you don't mind my being forthright. Radiant Supreme, but I think you know why I felt the need to speak to you. And he kind of just sits on the bed, like a very kind of defeated slump. And he's like, I think I do. And he just waits. <sighs> he looks as sad as a slug man can look. You you reacted nervously yesterday before I even prompted you. That wasn't the reaction of someone who had no idea what was going on. That was the reaction of someone who knew damn well that there was something to be afraid of. I and mean, obviously through his wonderful <laughs> type speaking, <laughs> he goes, "How well do you know your history?" Not especially. The folly of the young. Is this... Is this history relating to your particular religious group, or...? And he kind of like waves his hand open, like you've seen Alice do many times, but then all this kind of light from the room just spirals in, and then it looks like it's forming like a big spirally galaxy. And then, eh... Uh, yeah, it does. It forms the packed worlds. Like, bits of kind of light coalesce into darker shapes. And I instantly recognise that, presumably. Yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty, pretty safe to say that you recognise, like, Absalom Station, like, just as a wee shining beacon in the middle. You've got yeah. uh, the sun. And then, uh, My eyes probably widen slightly. Like, not in a, oh, more in a sort of, huh. <laughs> yeah, because, like, it just, like, basically does that that thing where it's like, you're, you know, the galaxy's bigger than you know moment in any sci-fi thing ever. And so the room fills with this fucking cosmic light show. And then, uh, yeah, roll culture. Okay. And perception. Right. Shall I write a little message first? Nah, go for yes. it. Let's see what happens. Okay. Right, let's culture. Uh, do, 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 do. Slug checks. <laughs> <laughs> Slugging it out. 
A very cultured and a very perceptive boy. Yeah. The um the ass present in the the image. This is before. Mm. And Eox looks very lush. They yeah. They haven't I don't know what the truth of it is, but the story I was always told is that the Oxians developed a weapon so terrible that the backlog, the backlog, the backlog, the backlash <laughs> of it almost destroyed them, and it wiped out their enemy entirely. He kind of just slowly, slowly nods, as if you're almost there. He kind of like waves his hand, and then like you know, everything starts rotating around the sun. And then things develop, and then you see like certain planets just like turn to deserts, and um, like Akaton becomes complete red desert. Um, you see like the rise and fall of a uh, is it Abalon, the one that's the the machine planet. Um, yep. You see it becoming like very technological. Um, My world. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Um, see the station. Uh, like stopping stops being like a shining beacon, and then like the the light dims away, and then it gets encased in metal, and it looks like a rudimentary version of the station. And then uh, obviously at this point, depending on your focus, you'll have noticed that there's the diaspora now. At this point, yeah. almost as if it skips the part where the planets, yeah. yeah. And he says, do you understand? I understand that something's missing, but... And no then one knows what or how much. All that, like, light, like, all, like, smacks into the middle of his hands, and then uh, it forms the image in the middle of the room, standing, like, as tall as it should be. Like, Urgalas is there. I probably take a sudden step back. Yeah, it's probably really goddamn imposing in the room as well. It is. Yeah, I thought you knew what we were talking about. This is Nalibrian. I know that word. And the Oxian. No. Four. Before. This is one of the first. He was speaking an ancient dialect. Elibrian. Then this entity has been around since possibly before the gap. I can like blinks his little kind of beady eyes and like nods solemnly. And it's still here. And it's powerful. Surv I wonder if everyone's afraid of it. Survived the gap. Now, like he waves his hand and it slowly like, crystallizes into like that purple crystal. It's and not the only thing that survived the gap. The ox did, in its way. Kind of like slowly nods and then he kind of like points his finger at like your chest, where the symbol. As assuming you'd still be wearing. Something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know it's, yeah. How you do. it's like Sindale's symbol on you. And then uh, he's like. Survived is an interesting term. I know better than most what they have. It may not be life, but it's survival. Me, I'm gonna crumble and rot. I'm just going to do it at maybe a tenth the rate I normally would. He kind of like nods, and he kind of like opens like both of his hands in front of him, like he's kind of like judging himself. And then he's like, I have lived on borrowed time. Don't be so quick to dismiss yours. I'm not. I just, I recognize that it is borrowed time. Which is his strength. I hope so. 
and he kind of like laughs, like kind of almost like a kind of you know, mused laugh to himself. And he's like, "Hope is a good word to have." It's not something I find a great deal of. I'm not. He sort of half smiles. I'm not anything like our uh, young friend. Um, nor am I particularly. Like as you say that, the camera does a split screen of Zig <laughs> pressed under the floorboard. <laughs> nor am I particularly like any of the other uh, compatriots in this mission. I I know I'm a doomed entity. I just look get along as best as I can and I understand that some may be off put by my nature or gestures to the symbol mm. some of the associations I've kept in my time I was a cop, I'm used to people not liking me because I've got a badge he waves his hand to you and he just says you survived like implying yeah. that his point earlier is now made <laughs> I'm not I'm not the good guy, I'm not going to pretend to be, but I intend to survive, and I intend to ensure as best as possible Absalom survives. But that doesn't look likely right now. He kind of um, clasps his finger release and just kind of like slowly nods gravely. I don't think Absalom will be there much longer. Trying to pry some wisdom from the uh, pearls offered by a bone sage is difficult. They are not like any living creature. They're so removed from life, it's it's impossible. They they speak in half profound nonsense and riddles and half just mad gibberish that comes with being however many millennia old. They're you know, they're they're monsters essentially. They're no he puts longer. his hand up and he's like, Wisdom just, is not always understood by the ignorant. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know if you've met many of them, but they're fucking insane. He kind of chuckles at that. And he says, Mind your tongue, I am a very well respected elder. And kind of chuckles more. <laughs> I think I like would just laugh. Yeah, sorry, I, uh, I don't necessarily, uh, sometimes I forget my manners. I've been used to uh, speaking in a certain way. This uh, line of work does tend to bring you into contact with some rough for customers. Uh, but I think, I think this, this creature is it's up to something that involves us somehow, and I have no idea how. It's completely beyond any of us. If the Dry Queen is indeed dead, her people dead, it has the solar vessel. I'm guessing it's not going to do anything too nice with it. If corrupted, very bad. If allowed to hatch naturally, very good. The vessel or the creature? And he kind of looks at you a wee bit, kind of goes, Is there a difference? Ur Urkales? We interrupted it. <laughs> We tried to... Aspis had it in a cocoon. Under observation, they were studying it, they were storing it, but obviously something went amiss, probably because of its presence. We realized the place was unstable. We tried to 
vent the source of the instability, which was the research lab, which was containing it. And he kind of like waves you off vaguely again with his hands, and he's like, "If this Urgalas wishes malevolence to the solar vessel, we are in trouble." And then he, he kind of like motions to you and he says, "How much do you know about the Burning Mother?" You know, more than I really have any particular care to know. <laughs> <laughs> you like How much do I know? Because I feel like I've been told. Yeah, I was gonna say. I think Zig has sent you almost everything. He Zig knows. Yeah. Um, but like, I think with that as well, obviously, like we're probably getting like Zig's eyes just getting wider and wider to the point where Zig's just one big yeah. eye, and then um, like the radiant supreme obviously chuckles at that because he probably has clicked on that you've spent time with Zig. Thus, of course, you know everything about the sun. Um, <laughs> But yeah, we fade out on that conversation there because there's way more to have on that <laughs> conversation and I don't mind going back to it next session. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like, again, just for the sake of dramatic endings, I, at this point we have our wonderful guest up here <coughs> on the ship say his piece of dialogue from the last session which essentially says... We have business to conclude. Dun dun dun. And we will end there since we are getting way over Long time. <laughs> yes. Um we'll end our session there, folks. That was very good. It was very, very good. Yay! Um let's get a name for this beast. Oof. Speak, priest! <laughs> Speak, <plainly>. <laughs> <laughs> Um Right, so... Revelations is maybe a really good title, considering that's also a hint at... Prophesizing Doom. It's, it's a good start, for sure. I mean, There's a lot of revelations. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't got any... Revelations, of course. <laughs> um... Other suggestions? Besides Mystery of the Tub over the Drow Queen? Um. <laughs> <laughs> what to do with the goo? <laughs> <laughs> the goo crew part two? Like. <laughs> the goo crew part two. <laughs> oh, yes. Is he, is he humus? <laughs> Dan's big. Uh. <laughs> Mother! <laughs> Any other suggestions then? What do you know about the Burning Mother? <laughs> what do you know about the Burning Mother? It's. Yeah. It's alright, yeah. Maybe we shouldn't play this game. <laughs> yeah. I think it's <laughs> Alice's line. That is clever, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alice is a subtle creature. Although, do you know, <laughs> right, let's. Well, these are all things about titles. I really, really, and I know obviously it's my dialogue, so it's a bit weird to jump in at this point. But, like, how fucking good is that line where she says, make it to the other side of the board? Given the current situation, I know. I was just thinking mm -hmm. that. I was like, "Oh, I love that." It was really good thinking. I was like, "I was impressed." Yeah. So the other side of the board is an option, but it's a quite long title as well. But um, no, I just really enjoyed that because it really involved lots of queen metaphors as well. Um, <laughs> so that was good. To be honest, though, pawns any as well might work. Pawns, yeah. It's, it's been a very yeah, pony episodes. Mm. <laughs> I don't like being a pawn. <laughs> I don't like being a pawn either. I mean. <laughs> I'd say that Revelations is a, probably a better suggestion than pawns because I just feel like the yeah. use having loads of reveals at the same time as the you know both Sindiel and the uh, Radiant Supreme being like, well, <laughs> what's to come is horrible. <laughs> so, hmm. Yeah, it's up to you guys though. Like, what is what? For revelations. Alex? Mapu Revelations. That's revelations. Is Cover that one. Dandy. Colin? Um. It's like, controversially, no. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was trying to think of a line from the film Fallen with Denzel Washington. Good movie. 
It's a very good movie. Yep. But ah, yeah, the whole Revelations plot thing is a, a, a plot point in it, if, or, if you recall. I can't remember when it comes up in the film. Mm. It's, um, I just like how the start of the movie is the end of the movie. Really yeah, good. yeah. It's circular because it's uh, it, the whole thing with like you know you yeah mm. <laughs> he's, yeah so it's good. Like, oh you forgot didn't you yeah yeah uh, it's very good uh, I thoroughly enjoyed that movie right let's do our cooldown then um in fact before we do that party goals are we happy with the party goals still as it is yeah because it makes sense yep. going forward into next section yep good good we'll leave that as yeah. is um right what about let's start just start from the top then. Nico, thoughts on the session? Screw you. <laughs> 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 right, okay, so specifically why? For <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to free your sessions, I'm smash. <laughs> okay, so it's specifically why 23 sessions of this special. Why? That's why. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, how dare you? Um, <laughs> uh, no, it was good. It was <laughs> I just enjoyed it. I enjoyed it all. I know that's a really cop out answer, but I really did. It was just a nice eye opening experience. Right. About how the madness actually does make sense once like yeah, yeah. You, you get a bit more yeah. like like as I said, I have a plan for this game. I know it doesn't seem like it for most of those twenty three sessions, but there is a story that's happening, and I think you're starting to get it together, which I really like. My favourite was feeling how angry you got, Nico, when Edgar was like, I don't know nothing about that. What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't give a fuck about Emlyn. I, I was like, oh. I, I, I was just <laughs> said that. I was like, oh my god, did I do that? I'm happy with Katie. I saw a quick conclusion to who probably did do it, but I thought, mm. yeah, screw you guys, I conclude my statement. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, I think, Alex. <laughs> yeah, um, screw you, and <laughs> no, um, <laughs> that option. <laughs> that was, um, yeah, kind of good to see. I guess just that sense of kind of getting to that character level where you start coming out from under I guess under the rock mm -hmm. and seeing what's what's being pieced together um, and getting a real sense of who we need to murder and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> So far like everyone, right? Seems yep. to be on that list, I mean, yeah Yeah, that's not really changed my view yeah, on that's about everybody um, <laughs> no, Obviously good to get back to chatting to Alice yeah, of course. Yeah. I've missed that. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I've missed that so much. I actually love any time MD wants to talk to Alice alone. It's some of my favourite scenes. Oh. Yeah, it's nice that we've progressed past her falling over herself and <laughs> we're actually working on a project together. Yeah. A bonding time. And yet she's still enjoyably weird. Yes. Yeah, like, I feel like you feel that a year has passed for her, right? Even mm -hmm. though she's still very much herself. I did, yeah, it's a quite catch up, but yeah, you did actually do a good job at it, to be honest with you, because you did feel a hell of a lot more developed this session than before. Mm. Well, even with the yeah. way she spoke to Next Five, <laughs> right? It was very much a, uh, no, like, because when she stopped you, she didn't, like, put your like her hand over your mouth or anything like that, she just put her, like, her hand on your chest, and it was like... Yeah, it was much more familiar. Yeah, and it's almost like, it was almost less rude as well, mm -hmm. in a way. Um... Whereas before it probably just be like no shut up, <laughs> like it's almost right. warm as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Despite her still being awkward around you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, now, as I said, I again, my kind of side project in this game is enjoying Alice's development. Um, <laughs> it's really fun. <laughs> so honestly, guys, anytime you want to have a conversation with her, I'm I'm all for that. It's brilliant, especially since I don't write any of her dialogue anymore, like at, at all. I wrote some of it at the start for the station, obviously. Um, when she was mostly the station, but now it's just too fun to just be her. To be honest, it's great. I love to chime in with the the good of the crew thing. Mm. It was just it was perfectly timed. Yeah. I was like, oh, it was a nice callback, though, wasn't yeah. it? 
It really was. It was like just fortifying mine and Colin's argument. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, this is so good. But I mean, keep in mind, <laughs> she's had a year of working with you guys. Do you know what I mean? Like, she's been part of the crew for a year. Um, so, that probably implies a lot about what's happened on the ship for a year with her being like, yeah, it's totally cool to lie. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Especially <laughs> to the crew if it's for the good. Mm-hmm. Um, anything else, Alex? I'd enjoy it, like her not letting Cinderella escape. Mm. Yeah, like making us think, oh, no, I'm not done. Yeah. yeah, yep. And yeah, Cinderella so just looking confused at that as well, like, wait, what? I'm not meant to still be here. <laughs> I think that kind of comes around to the whole point as well that I've made earlier about, yeah, that feeling coming out from under the rock. Mm-hmm. That we're kind of standing up for ourselves a bit more in it all. It's good to see from a GM point of view, for me, seeing you guys jump back into your character shoes, as it were so easily after like a month of nothing and then again from that before that a month again because it's been mm-hmm. that says two sessions in what two months like that's not bad given how comfy we are with these people now um, yep. even people like a year like falsely a year more bonded um, yeah it's good it's really good and I hadn't even thought about it but I might be about to throw threaten to blow up Hermione again <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. Oh well, there you go. It's pretty good. Tune in yeah. next time. Yep. <laughs> um yeah, I'm looking forward to that. That's got off. Yep. Uh Lyco. Or Colin I should say, since I've been yeah. good uh, evening. <laughs> uh, right, so obviously that was a very Lyco heavy session, I think. Um, well, it wasn't it? Wasn't it? I'd say everybody got a good, a good innings. Yeah. I got oh, to yeah. do my favourite thing, which is chat meaningfully at people. Um, mm-hmm. it, yeah, it was interesting. I really did like that I got to do it, and I'm glad Alex noticed that the, the, the bit where just sort of the, the going, no, no, you're here. You're you're mm-hmm. gonna finally answer my questions. It wasn't just a power move, it was, it was a practical thing, but it did have the effect of being, no, I'm not powerless here. Mm. You're in by my invitation, and I can block you at the doorway. To an extent, obviously he's a very powerful entity, with powers across who knows, you know, how many different spectrums of powers that he has. He's probably very psychic if he could do that, but he's clearly also enormously mystically powerful. But like On that so, point, though, like as well, you had just been told by a powerful psychic that when psychics contact people or spend time with people, yeah, they leave lingering true. effects. Yeah. So it makes perfect sense you'd then try and reach out to somebody yeah, you know exactly. you've connected with. I thought it was a good call, and obviously it worked, so it was sort of at least. Um, but what, I, what I really liked was, yeah, they were sort of, sort of getting to say, no, 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 this is a two-way street. This is a, a sort of an arrangement we have where I am working with you. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I am not one of the zombie schmucks. Um, <laughs> and... <laughs> what, <the fuck>? what? <laughs> what on earth? That was what from was that? you, Zig. <laughs> that was from me. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, Zig? What the fuck? Um, Is that like this happens to Zig under the fucking metal floor <laughs> paneling? <laughs> Ooh, bah! <laughs> anyway, carry on. Oh, Michael. dear, I apologize. For that, a lot of reasons. I enjoyed doing that very much. Uh, I did love this. <laughs> like, let's build a fucking bomb. This is the solution. Last time we didn't actually have a bomb. We just did self destruct. This time, if we have a bomb, it's more convincing. Um, I mean, I like to think that's the, the thought process. Uh, it probably isn't. But yeah, it, it was just an interesting sort of bit where we're sort of, yeah, we are more aggressively posing the questions. We are the ones who are sort of pursuing almost our agenda. Like, mm-hmm. It's no longer just about getting a mission and going for it and, and that I like a great deal because it does feel like yes we are coming into our own um, and it does reflect nicely the party goal thing as well right because I mean that's given you yeah, guys more sure. direct control over how you progress and your characters are reflecting that as well right mm-hmm. straight away which I like I like it a lot um, um, I think I've had one other thing to add, probably be just like that. Edgar's sort of obviously he's got his big end game in mind. Um, we're really in this weird position where we 
don't know how much he knows about everything we're saying, doing, and thinking. Like, we have no idea how safe we are, and we're just going to have to roll with it. Mm. Right? We're just going to have to work under these circumstances. Kind of just hope um, that he's not undermining us the whole time and fully aware of everything we're doing. Um, <laughs> like it's a dangerous, dangerous position to be in. Um, but I like that sort of sense of like we've never been fighting under what I would call exactly optimal circumstances, right? We've always kind of been mucking it out in really pretty shitty circumstances. Mm-hmm. We've always um, been over our heads. That's yeah, what's exactly. And I'm enjoying sort of that's getting sort of taken to its ultimate extreme now where, you know, we're probably going to have to try and save Absalom, right? I mean... I mean, it depends what's hap- what, what, what's even happening at Absalom. Yeah, or, or <laughs> save some of the people fleeing. <laughs> I'm Clearly, more the point is that we're going to be able to save it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Let it burn. <laughs> I mean, because like, we don't have a choice. Is, so, um, <laughs> judging the judging by the uh, the players in the game, I don't know if there's a hell of a lot that we would be able to stop. Yeah. <laughs> no, like, wow, savage! <laughs> but we I do, mean, we do what we can. I so mean. I just feel I'm kind of fucking done right now. All right, he's playing. <laughs> he's feeling defeated. <laughs> it makes sense why Zora feel defeated, though, given that. You kind of feel like you've given up your friend to the slaughter, really, right? Like, yeah. it's pretty much what Edgar implied was like, well, you've, yeah. you've let her walk into death. I uh, enjoyed his anger at that, actually. Um, mm. Nico, it was, it, was, it was good. Yeah, slamming the table, mm-hmm. it was good. The feeling of responsibility. It was, um, yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a sort of display of private emotion as well when he went back in a mood. Mm. Um, like, I just think that's interesting that he's obviously, he, he isn't just this big girly vest that there, there is more to Psychic him. Psychic you know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not her best friend. No, it's just the psychic stuff. Aye. Aye, it's totally not. <laughs> That's why I smoke cigars as well, obviously. <laughs> like, Aye. Just, <laughs> just picked that up from Emlyn. Yep. Uh. I like to believe that nobody's really sure who actually was the first person on board to smoke cigars. Just everybody else kind of <laughs> picked it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. That's really good. Um, what about you, uh, Cal? Um, I just loved it all. No, I I actually really loved that um, just moment of um, everyone just sitting in that sort of family moment of look. I know this guy's kind of important to you, but. He's definitely fucking lying. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Like, you've only known each other for two weeks, you are not in love. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I the mummy! Um, it was, it was not, it was, it was just a nice, like, moment, I think. And, you know, I, I, I loved, I, I loved all of my bits to be <laughs> I loved yeah. being back. That's what it was. It was, it was good, it was good having every day we pack, it does just, it honestly feels like it's yeah, been yeah, 10,000 yeah. years, um, just for all of us. Um, nice to GM the game again, to be honest. Uh, I wasn't really sure how much would be a complete mess, quite frankly, um, mm. from my point of view, but it went well, I was very pleased that you guys all settled in really quickly, I wasn't sure how much hand-holding I'd have to do as a GM when it comes to, I don't mean that patronising, I mean that from a oh. easing people back into... A storyline that we've not spoke about for a month. Um, oh, and it's actually quite a strong session, to be honest, as well. Yeah, yeah, just like CSN's yeah. have built up the momentum verbally to get you guys into position to talk to people. I wasn't going to hold back. I was like, no, this is the time to dump. Like, this is here we go. This is perfect. Um, no, yeah. It's time to dump. And we've got some good rules as well, um, some interesting rules. Um, we have a bomb to build. Um, yes. Obviously not the, not the only bombshell that we got in this session. Um, Don't worry, I have a plan for funny, it. It's um, funny, I actually... <laughs> I had an idea. Oh dear. Um, that did involve a bomb, so... <laughs> <laughs> I mean... I want whether any of those are the same ideas I had. <laughs> we shall find out in character. <laughs> <laughs> oh. At least we will have a bomb. There will, there oh. will be at least one bomb. Um, <laughs> it did. It did. Uh, right. It seemed like the only solution I could find. 
<laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Doesn't mean to say it's a good one. But that's... I did say it's <laughs> the incompetent. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it, it's completely fine. Um, I think there was a couple of things that I really enjoyed about that overall. I think, as I said, for me, looking at each of you, having <laughs> Zora actually be like, cut the bullshit, what's actually going on, like, with everything, right? I enjoyed that from a Zora kind of actually being a bit more captainy that way, being like, no, like, what's what the fuck? This is my ship. Yeah. Tell me this. What's going on? You clearly needed us. Dot dot dot. Even the point well, where we're feeling comfortable to intimidate, right? Oh, as well. yeah. To interrupt. Yeah, that was that was good. Like that, I didn't see, but uh, yeah, you're, you're right. That in terms of like, he was almost territorial. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah that and that felt very Vesk and yeah. friend, right? It was and very good. Okay, yep. Oh yeah, yeah. It's good. So I really enjoyed that from Zora. Um, and I don't know if it's even just necessarily intentional at this point, or if it's just the comfort you have being Zora that that made sense to just act that way now, especially given the, from a GM point of view, obviously I don't necessarily want to bring up X player like characters and such, obviously, but Emlyn's such a big part of the story that it was a very good moment to be like, well this is just learning stuff about a plotline you didn't get to see because obviously we don't have like Olka, that is. But um, I don't have an issue with you guys resolving that plotline, Sonsor, of course. Uh, if it allowed, in, in some way, possibly scheduling wise, we could always look to seeing what the possibility is of having her for a specific session. Don't know. We can always look to that, obviously. We could maybe loop in Olka on that chat at some point. It would be uh, interesting as a, a nice wee. Maybe final session for or something. Be awesome. Again, we'll we'll have that conversation elsewhere. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. oh, no. Yes. Um beyond <laughs> that, uh Nix uh, as we've said many times, Alice, Nix, Alice, Nix. Will they, won't they, should they, don't they? You know? Um, sure, man. Harder, faster, stronger, better technologic. <laughs> um so yeah, like there will be fireworks. Yeah, and I just feel like Zig should probably be involved. Bomb. <laughs> 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 For building a bomb. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes. laughs> <That's not sense. laughs> you all welcome. Um, beyond that, Lyco going to chat to the Supreme was awesome because it, I like the fact that while you pushed everybody in the, in the room as well, you knew enough to be like, no, because everybody will pull away from each other if I keep pushing this just now. I'll leave it and then I'll go speak to him myself. I think like, he's a good people person. You're one of the best people persons we've got. Um, because I'm fucking not. <laughs> this is why it's called roleplay. Um, hey. I also like the idea that like he even gets intimidated like when like the image of Urgalas appears and it's like wait with him. Oh yeah, he's he's not fearless. Mm -hmm. he's, he's, uh... And it just kind of goes to show it's like yeah, the Radiant Supreme definitely knows a lot. Definitely, mm. um, but he's obviously old enough, wise enough, salty enough to not necessarily just tell everybody anything, right? Because obviously, as he said, some people are too ignorant to understand the wisdom in something, you know. So the idea that, and he doesn't mean that in an insulting way. It just means that in a kind of if I say what I actually know, it might scare you people, you know. Truth can be a uh, intimidating. I know that we knew about Urgalas, uh, sorry, um, Bow and Sages, a lot of them getting wiped out and stuff. Was it? Did we know it was because of um, Urgalas's folk? Um, again, it's very vague, probably not. Mm, I don't think so, but I mean, that may have been discussed in the, but I don't, think, I don't think so. It's, I think we as players discussed it, but I don't think characters know it. It feels to me like something that maybe they would want to keep. Mm -hmm. On the DL, yeah. As it were. I'm pretty sure most of it was pre-gap anyway, so, like, yeah, it's not something that's particularly common knowledge. Um, I'd say people that are likely to have a, a chance at knowing this shit would be like, if Lyco decided to go study it, you know, <coughs> it, it's unlikely that it would just be knowledge people know or have lying around. It would have to have had like, yeah. well, they've ever had that Lyco died on Eox, right? 
I mean, so it was stuff that basically I would have had to have asked and been and then been willing to tell me really, mm -hmm. and how much is I actually going to be. And I mean, I keep in mind, think of is you've got Urgal. Sorry, Sindael, sorry. Yeah, you've got Sindael's year you spent yeah. working together, right? So there's a lot to yeah, be to glean from that as well. But I guess we'll see. Sorry, what was that, Nico, you were saying? There's also the, the very narrow and maybe cheesy option of maybe asking the Viscarium about it. Because I'm pretty sure they probably have their eyes on the Yorks. It's a pretty scary place. Mm. Yeah. I think everyone does. I mean, given that. question of mm. how much they see. The Vesk like conquest and the Oxians, well, you know yourself firsthand as Zora, like a bone sage wrecked yeah. a whole bunch that's, of that's where, that's where I'm basing it off of. If something mm -hmm. was that dangerous, you would keep your eye on them. Yeah. Like, it's not I, not yeah, even that, like, just as a, right, there's the crown and the, and like, sorry, there's the jewel and the crown, you know, them. Which is, I say it a lot, but it is an angle I need to look at a lot more often, is the fact that I'm connected to the Viscarium. Could mm -hmm. maybe find something that that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like I would say, you're not without friends there. Do you know what I mean like you definitely yeah. aren't? Um, not necessarily. I mean, favorless I friends. A phone call to the Viscario manager, but I mean, I'm sure there's ways. Yeah, there's galactic communication, right? You could send messenger ships. Like, yeah, there's loads. You could just fly there, right? It'd take a while, but you could just fly there. Um, but yeah, road uh, trip lads. Yeah, <laughs> to the Viscarium <laughs> season two. Um, <laughs> I vote no. Yeah, beyond that, I um, you're a lot of this guy. Yeah. Ask what you talk about. <laughs> Thought you were getting that too. <laughs> yeah, like beyond yeah. that, like I, I enjoyed that about like Colin's uh, interactions with uh, I should say Lyco's interactions um, with that. I enjoyed the Sindale stuff, obviously, because Sindale is weird as shit. Um, standard, obviously, I'm going to enjoy Sindale. Um, yeah. I also enjoyed everything Sindale said to you, though. Like a lot of that was quite poignant. For Lyco, um, whether some it, of it was even intelligible. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but that's the thing. I think see between, obviously, things Edgar said, things Sindael said, things the Supreme said, and things Alice said. There were a lot of moments there where like a lot was given to you guys that maybe takes a wee bit of time to just unpack when you think yeah, of the yeah. twenty-two sessions previously. Um, so. I wouldn't say it's a terrible idea to maybe go back and just listen to those specific parts of the conversations to maybe oh, be like, wait, what the fuck? To do, I know that. Um, beyond that though as well, my, I liked just again Zig being unadulteratedly Zig because you haven't had a year of development, you've you've been there kind of on point. I liked your moment with Edgar in the room when you decided to share as well. Um, mm. Kind of makes me like feel like Zig treats Edgar very differently now for the rest of the uh, like compared to the rest of the crew um, well yeah I feel like Zig almost feels like he kind of owes Edgar a little bit for mm. getting through that um, through the vaults there because that was um, that was a bit hairy yeah yeah there's obviously more to come we'll see um, I think that was great guys thank you so much for such a fun session um, thank you for thank running. You. Thanks for running. And uh, we will all reconvene in the future. Uh, thanks to everybody who listened. And uh, yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye.